Producer dude, we have a guy who has been on the podcast. It was been several years ago, I believe, at this point. I yeah, he was think one of the one of the first uh, people we ever uh, recorded. He might have been episode two or three, and we're now uh, this <clears throat> is now episode seventy one. I saw our little makeshift studio at your house when we first started doing this, and that was a four four years ago on a Facebook memory. Wow. Crazy to think that four years of podcasting, because most podcasts don't make it past an average of seven episodes I read. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff going on. So any rate, um, we bring in Joe Cermelli. If you haven't followed our stuff, you may have seen his stuff, or maybe you're coming here because you like watching him and you don't like us, whatever. But we've done a lot of things through the years. Me and him have been fishing and filming together at least 15 years, I guess. But he has his own podcast now. Uh, but Joe, I think, producer dude, you can relate to this. We have some people on here that are maybe aren't the best talkers at times or don't think they are or aren't open. And I don't feel that's going to be a problem with Joe. Yeah, Joe's a, Joe's a straight shooter. Joe's going to talk. Uh, he's an entertaining person. He's a great storyteller. Um, I know you don't probably like me giving him compliments, but he, he is a great <laughs> guest. Well, we definitely, there's a lot of um, chop busting, I guess you could say. So we, we this, he's the guy, where, there are no notes. We don't know where this is going to go. Um, we're just going to roll out. But I feel like if there's anybody, we can just talk about nothing and make it awesome. I, I imagine this will be that. I would normally say welcome back to the Big Water Podcast, Joe Cermelli. But so I'm not welcome. That's okay. That's fine. Well, I'm. That's partial. What I want to talk about a little bit. Being welcome. I, about I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell everybody right now. Uh, I said yes to this. I do not know the plan. I do not know what <laughs> what this man plans to speak about. So uh, I'm a scared. I'm a scared. You should usually but, have a plan, so yeah, you but, don't have to really worry about that. He'll he'll come up with something. Listen, yeah, I mean, but honest, honest to God, don't you feel as a guy, and we're going to get to this a little bit, because I do, I mean, there's in my head, there's a few things, but the notepad is, you know, it's kind of empty like my brain, mm -hmm. but I, I think that people plan too much on these podcasts and you don't have a discussion with chums or buddies or guys of mutual respect in the fishing deal because that's what we're doing right it's a fishing podcast you know it's a funny thing as a podcaster myself you're gonna this it's this is funny because it's like this is like a quid pro quo this is how ross operates he's like i'll do your <laughs> podcast but you have to do my podcast first and i'm like uh Producer, fine. Dude, does this surprise you uh yeah no but but Not to your all. point to your to your point um, I agree with you. Like some of the most fun we have on my show is when it is just a, a, a rap session with the homies. But for me, I think, cause I'm a writer, I cannot sit down with anybody and have zero plan. Like we might wander from the plan. We might go a whole other direction, but like, I'm just, I like, I need to have an outline of like where I'm going. That's just a me thing though. You're, I mean, I get that because I'm, a I'm also more professional. Guy. Yeah. I'm yeah. Is that you're what you're going to say? It started with a P, but it, yeah, 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 but it, yeah. it didn't end in echinol. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was it ended in enus. Yeah. Yeah. Any anyway, funny funny story. I think people will appreciate this because I was actually just at a sports show, which I really wasn't working a sports show down south. I literally got back at one in the morning last night, mm. and I'm sitting there, and it was joking because I had a meeting, and the guy was like, "Hey, is you know where can we meet up?" And I said, "I will." I literally flew five hours after I bought the ticket mm -hmm. to sit down with this guy. We have some business things working, and it was just one of those like now or never. This is an easy time when it's no ice, but ice. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah, and a guy walked straight up to me, and there was a joking because one of my sponsors had a booth there, so I was kind of hanging around, you know, before this meeting I had, and this guy walked dead beat up to me. Like if she was a hot chick, like that would have been awesome. But it was, you know, no offense if they're listening to this, which they may be from what I'm about to tell you. If you could this make the conversion, like, it would have been awesome. But you yeah, know, you're, it's yeah. I, yeah, I don't I don't know, I don't know how many you convert. Yeah, I've most. It's got to be fishing ten percent. If I had to well, guess. Uh, uh, I mean, know, three words and you're out. You know, <laughs> well, between my mouth <laughs> and um, you know, a fishing ten being a world three, I said it. That's yeah, get really bad stuff. But any rate, and this guy just beat lines up, and he's like Ross Robertson, man. I love your stuff. So, of course, one of my sponsors there was like, ah, right? Like middle of bum nowhere. We are deep south right here, deep south. Long story short, the guy's like, man, I watched you. I started watching you on Hook Shots. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so then I followed you from this. And, and I, you know, I know there's been both ways. Like there's people that I introduced you to and vice versa and stuff. And yeah. he's like, man, if you could ever, you know, and he's just catching up or whatever. But it was kind of funny. And I said, ironically, I said, be in the lookout. There may be a little, uh, 
maybe not the reunion you're looking for, but one coming. But yeah, the funniest part of what I was going to start this with, actually, because things that just make me chuckle. That's what I like. I like things that just when I'm driving down the lake and I kind of just start smiling and laughing to myself and someone's like, isn't there like a movie like in Dumb and Dumber? And they're like, I just thought of something funny. Mm -hmm. So I was taking my mom to dinner here whenever we talked a week or two before I had to go back and get some stuff. And and she was like, so what's going on? And this is when me and you like we're just finishing up the conversation. And I was like, oh, that was Joe Sermo. She's like, oh, I just love that Joe Sermo. Moms love me. Moms you, love me, man. Well, that's where we're going with this. Don't get too up. up Come yet. on. Come on. So she's like, you guys, quote, I wrote, I did write this down. Let me see. Um, you guys are just so good together. And now, of course, I looked at my mom as I'm driving my big three quarter ton. And I was like, mom, I like girls. I'm not really sure about him. He is married, though. And my mom turned and gave me this look of like, you, I just, I just, you can't even say anything around you. And I was like, man, this, now you start like Joe. Now you that is, like Joe. that is true, man. But you can't really mm. say anything around you. I've, I've never seen somebody like twist the littlest thing in the most vulgar way. You know what I mean? I mean, it's an art. It's an art. I'll give it to you. Like it's, you know, not everybody can do that, but. Well, country Steve, you know, he's, he could teach us a thing too. I, I actually know many, many people that are, make me look like child's play to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. in, in all seriousness, um, is it kind of hurt your feelings that you think that your mom probably would like me more than you? Because we've talked about this privately. Uh, We're like-minded. Yeah. Yeah. We actually have uh, talked about that. Uh, my mom and you would, would get along smashingly, I think, which is, <laughs> which, because uh, I'm trying to think of how to definitely say this. So I don't make you or my own mom look bad, but let's I hope you say, please do, let's please just, do. Let's and just, I will use this as evidence. Let's just say, uh, I love I love my mother, but but she has some opinions about things and stuff that like I like do the eye roll, but like you and her would be right on par, and I could just see her making a pot of coffee and you just talking about like things in in many different spectrums from political and otherwise, and like she would just love you. You know what I mean? Joe, moms love me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I I, I turn that on. <laughs> That's that's fine, but yeah, like you and my mom could have a rant session about so many things on uh, Fox News. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, not not even them anymore. <laughs> Those guys are commies too. But that's another story. We don't do politics. We, here. we don't do politics. I never do politics. Uh, but you know, kind of like one thing I did want to talk with you about because again, I don't know how open you're going to be because you're guarded, and that's fine. I get it and stuff. But yet you're going to say you're not. But whatever. Ball busting. anything. Yeah, ball, ball busting, busting and, I, and I don't even mean me and you, but even there are people that I, I don't ball busting is just different than it used to be, i.e. I go to a sports show and they're like, hey, I saw you on the so and so with Joe, man, can't believe you guys still do stuff together. You guys hate each other. Right. Like yeah. that one's kind of I'm, I'm kind of over that one because it's kind of overplayed. But the ball busting just seems to have changed in fishing. Is it becoming too soft and too weak? Well, I don't I don't know if that's just fishing, dude. I mean, you're just like not allowed to be funny or do anything in and like in any genre anymore. Like I would agree with that. Like you have to be more guarded. But you know what's funny? For years you've had people say to you, like, why do you guys hang out? You hate each other. And I have I first of all, that is not true. Like uh, you you annoy the shit out of me sometimes, but like I like you. Likewise. I wouldn't be doing this, Likewise. right? And that's and that's fine, right? That's the dynamic. But what always like boggles my mind, and I've said this on so many podcasts in so many places, like even when I meet new people, I can actually I can actually give you a good example in a minute. But people don't understand, and maybe maybe this is a northeast thing, like where I'm from and the way I was raised and the people that I grew up with. If I meet you for the first time and I don't have much to say to you, and I'm not busting your balls, then I don't like you. You know what I mean? And it's like if I'm breaking your stones, it's actually because I like you. So if like you're worried about like whether you're cool with me or not, if I'm just like, oh, hey, man, yeah, cool story. Awesome. Nice fish. Well, see you later. Then I didn't like you. If I like you, then I will start breaking your stones. And this happened to me uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a tog trip with our mutual friend uh, Kerber, Captain Eric Kerber, just this winter, put a group of guys together. It was my neighbor and one of his buddies. You actually fish with him, Vadim. When you were out here uh, last fall, we went striper fishing with this crew, and uh, yeah, there's like an unspoken rule on a bottom fishing trip, in my opinion. Like, you, you pick your corner of the boat, 
and you stick to it. Like, so on the very first drop, it's like, I'm going to be here. You're going to be here and I'm going to be here. And no matter how good or bad the bite is at your spot, like you commit to it. And it's like this unspoken thing, because what happens is maybe the guys on the other side are crushing it, but then, you know, and you're not because you're not over the right structure. And then when the boat moves, we go to a new spot. Well, now where you're standing might light up. So it like goes all around. But Vadim would like, like move all over, like weasel in on this side and then come That's over like here, country where, Steve where, where, wherever the, wherever the bite was good. And like, I, I took a shot and, and I'm like, I'm busting your balls. And I feel like he was upset. And it's like, no dude, I'm breaking your balls because I like you because that was, it's funny. You know what I mean? So if that was somebody else who I didn't like, I would have said nothing and then just like trashed you later. I didn't do that. I like you. Like, that's why I'm breaking your balls. So people, I don't think people get that. Like there are too many people who are uptight and just think like, what? I just met that dude. What? Why did he like, no, it's because I like you now. I can't, I can't swear that you bust balls for the same reason. I mean, we all have our reasons, but that's me. That's how I roll. No, I, I think it is too. Like, I mean, as a guy that has run a tremendous amount of guide trips in mm -hmm. his time or promotional trips, you know, so I, promotional trips are probably even worse, to be honest with you. And when I say promotional, that may mean I'm taking somebody out from a contest that was won for a raffle of sweepstakes, mm -hmm. which is like a guide trip, but not. Um, or I would say more actively what it would be for me is I'm working with said company and they send a design guy or you know or a sales guy and they're like sure we're we be honest most of the time they just want to get out of the office and go fishing sure but call it what it is but it's disguised as we're doing research it's like what everybody the stereotype of fishing is it's like this yeah. is it yeah and you get a guy in your boat and it's evident that with the rain gear and the creases in his clothing you know and his rubber boots that don't have a scuff on them mm -hmm. that he has never done this before which is fine because we've all been there at some point everybody is a first with things yeah but when those guys are like oh yeah i mean how about you with yeah, and they start telling you about all their accomplishments before you're out of the channel. Mm -hmm. Then I know I'm like, this is this is gonna be a long day type of thing. But when you when you get that guy and you kind of like you said, not even again, it would be fair and I'd be honest and say a Ross level five ball boss thing is probably it's it's harsh for most people. Mm -hmm. Like we get to seven, they're gonna cry. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if, if I hang around guys, you know, I've seen like countries. eleven. You know what I mean? Big head country, Steve. Yeah. Those guys are on another level as well. That's just what I'm used to. Like this is like we're playing pro football, man. This is not this is not Pop Warner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I'm surprised that a Ross five is like I I know I have to dial that back to a one with said person from fishing company that doesn't really fish or whatever we're doing. And but they don't. It's just like when you sit there and we're catching fish and you're not even like reacting you just catch the biggest fish of your life i know it's the biggest walleye they caught they just told me 20 minutes ago they never caught a walleye before you get a six pounder that's a nice fish mm -hmm. you go to winnebago you can catch one of those in 12 years yeah and then there's just no like i want the camaraderie even if we don't have the the time that me and you do that's how you start that at the end of the day you're high five when somebody catches a fish instead of like <laughs> Well, I mean, look, man, like <laughs> I can honestly say like every everybody that I'm friends with now or I've ever been friends with, even going back to like school days. It's like I, if I think of like, how did I become friends with that person? Because I busted his balls and he busted mine. And I was like, OK, you're my people or like we shit talked somebody. You know what I mean? It's like that's how I connect with people. And I've like you, I've ended up on boats and on trips with a lot of people who were not into that. And that's fine that's cool but are we going to become like lifelong fishing buddies no probably not like that's just <laughs> how and that's fine like like it, that's there's nothing wrong with that but like i i, I mean to, like even with with you and i like if somebody takes a shot at me i don't get mad i'll be like dude that was good like i'm gonna use that like that was damn good on you that was really good man like that's how i have fun you know i think it's like you said it goes back to a culture thing i saw a thing the other day and they said that friends the tv show mm -hmm. wouldn't even be able to be released in 2023 2024 or whatever yeah because of it being and you're like that was i didn't really like that but that was like an iconic show of the time or yeah. you know whatever but um i just think of stone breakers and like uh producer dude got to see it just a little bit we had mike weinhofer on oh really we did a while back and the reason we had him on and again the same thing and that's why i haven't I'm, talked to him forever but he was like one like he was like like the elvis of ball busting when i you told him me back in the day 
I don't know if you remember this. You told me this is back when Dave James was still alive. Yeah. You said, I hope that at some point that I get to be in a boat with you and Weinhofer, just mm -hmm. not too close. Right. Because you said it yeah. would be like ball buster one versus ball buster two. You got you. He is so he is so high level that I figure with you, you're either going to fall in love with each other or like the ball busting will be too much. And like there will be hands thrown at the end of the day. <laughs> and I, I it was going to be one or the other. Because, man, that dude, Mike Weinhofer, and I've sent so many people down to him. I haven't talked to him forever, but great guy. He was like, I couldn't keep up. I was like, damn, I've just been wrecked all day by this dude. Well, you're you're like a professional. It's just like when people get in my boat and they tell me jokes, and mm -hmm. I, I can like, no, 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 finish the line. Dude, I get salesmen in my boat daily. Like, you've heard the rotation, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when, you, when you're when you almost like a, like a bad stand-up comedian when you're mm -hmm. a guide. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a whole different thing of, because there is a little bit of psychology and things that go into it. But yeah, Mike is producer dude backed me on this one where the reason we had him on, like, you know, again, what he's doing and the keys and everything, whatever. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. not where I want to go to fish, to be honest. No offense, Mike and everybody else, but it's a great I, area. I, but... I will say though, very quickly, like say it's been a while since I've seen him, but he now basically owns a party boat. And I yeah. think like, you, me, and like we'll pick the like country Steve and like the biggest ball busters we know. We'll do like a like a like a three nighter at the Dry Tortugas on Mike did, Weinhofer's did, did party. Did you guys boat. hear that? That's my like, heart pumping. Like, <laughs> like we'll either somebody will be dead. Like we'll get back and be like, I don't know, this guy didn't make it back. We don't know what happened to him. Or it'll be like the best time we've ever had. It could be a disaster or amazing. It's like a, a bad remix of Hangover with a Boat. Yeah, like, dude, what's that new? Like, see, I'm, I'm not like a reality. Uh, I'm not a reality show guy, but my wife like watches that stuff religiously on Bravo. Oh, and like do. their new one, they just came out with. They were like, let's take all the shittiest people, like the villains of every Housewives oh. and Vanderpumps, and put them all in a house together. Like that's what that trip would be. The fact you know, that you came up with Vanderpump so quickly is really disheartening. But that's the one because it's on every morning when I wake up, and that is the one I can't stand the most. Anyway, go back to wine. I cut you off. You were telling me about Weinhofer. No, that's what we do here. It's fun. So, yeah. producer dude, back me on this. We have had a lot of people on, and we joked about this before we were when we were kind of testing levels and stuff here this morning. Is you get people that you know are great personalities. Mm hmm. You get them on camera. Try. Yeah. Yeah. You get them on camera or you get them on a podcast or maybe they won't even do it. Maybe they tell you, no, 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 no. But you know what they have. And whether it's like guarded or not, like we're dealing with that with Country Steve a little bit. We're getting him out of a shell. Like he would never, ever go do this, but he understands like, and I, I think he's kind of liking the, um, let's say uh, affection from the anglers now too. Sure. He's getting when he's sure. at the boat launch. But yeah, man, but that's well, not his. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that. his deal. He did it for me. But I guess my long winded point is, is. You get some people, and I'm not going to name names. We've had a couple. Of, we had a podcast that couldn't even run because of it. They say, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about it. And they get on, and it's like stone cold. Like, yes, sure, sure, okay. Sure. And, and, and the guys who I personally know, like I know of story A, B, and C, rather direct or indirect, and they don't – I mean, we had a guy who was talking about, a, 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 ironically, in the Florida Keys, and this these chicks hired him as a, as a captain, and he's like, yeah – and he's like bras on my head we didn't even fish they had me drive them down to x location and party basically yeah, yeah they were yeah, paying yeah. him to fish because they five minutes into a three-day trip they realized like we don't want to do this mm -hmm. and then we you know we roll and the guy's like yeah it was a crazy drive <laughs> yeah and Weinhofer was not that he... i was gonna say i didn't know where you were going what did mike oh. clam up or did mike go yeah, producer, Mike, jump Mike in was here. Good. Yeah, Mike was good. I think let's see, he he was asked to watch two people having sex. I think was one of the stories. Correct. Uh, yeah, he had a, gun, um, he had a, a playboy shoot. On him. Yeah, he had a gun pulled on him. I think at one point uh, yeah, um, had to call the sheriff and everything because yeah. this guy was guys him. dying on a Cuban boat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. producer dude, how did Mike do logging in digitally? Because I haven't had him on my <laughs> show yet, and my 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 fear was like. I love Mike, but I don't know if he's going to be able to handle this whole remote thing, and I don't know when I'm going to be in the keys next. So, how did that work out? Give me a little heads up. I don't remember it being. I don't remember it being an issue, was it, Ross? I don't remember. Let, let me. Did he let, sound let like me, he was talking through a potato, like he couldn't have had a mic or anything. <laughs> let, let's just 
Let's just say we ride by the seat of her pants, and Joe, you're 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 so wanting sound when levels you do, when and you're, all. When, when you're doing digital, like everyone is like, I start them. I'm like, oh god, please, please don't be talking through a soda can. You know, what I, I mean? I, producer, I'd be interested to see if you think what I think on this one. I would say the people that we sit on here with for a half an hour trying mm-hmm. to get them one two one two. Uh-oh. Do you see me? Every uh, every one I start, it's like, nope, still don't know. Try pushing this button. Right, right. I'm like, oh. It, and forget audio. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like, well, and we it's end up doing them on their phone. Yeah. yeah. Right. Those end up being probably the best guests, though, because that's that guy that isn't trying to be Joe salesman media, dude. He's yeah. just like, yeah, he, they, they're not even thinking like of a lot of these guys. I know they're thinking about the repercussions or, you know, so company ABC may not like that. I said shit. Yeah. These guys that take a half an hour to get down there, they're, they're, they're wiggling their phone. They got the ceiling. They're just like, they're, they're like me, wide yeah. open. Yeah. And I love yeah. It. Yeah. Well, see, I don't know how, how familiar like your listeners are with, with Mike. And I don't, I, cause I don't want to harp on Mike too much, but it's funny because It'd he's, be this, fun. he's incredible ball buster. But I, I mean, you know this, but he cut his teeth in Jersey. So like he's a Jersey guy too. He's got the same ball busting mentality from Jersey. Um, and he sponsors or not, he's just one of those guys that just gives zero shits. He never has, like he will say any. So I'm glad to hear that, uh, he opened up because I have had that before with people who on the water, man, just like incredible storyteller, but I can't fault people because you and I are used to sitting here with a microphone right here and we're comfortable with that. And that is the, the gamble, man. Like some people are jet, I deal with it all the time. You know what I mean? But, but- or like. Somebody's all the way back here, like barely talking. Like you have to get closer to the microphone, please. Yeah, you know? producer to use. I mean that all the time. Yeah. I think there's two things with that, though, in my opinion. There's the world that everybody's afraid of. I have to be PC or I'm going to be canceled, or, <laughs> or, or you know, what bathroom do I use? Right. And then the other half is is some of these guys are. <laughs> Mrs. Schmeller loves that one. Mm. So, not not your mom. Any rate, um, the second half. <laughs> That is, is I think it's the people I'm just signing off so. now. <laughs> yeah. Is the people that are kind of a little bit, um, I, I don't want to use the word scoundrel for this, but sketchy. And so they're always in their mind thinking about, hey, how am I going to be portrayed? So they're overly trying to be like a church mouse, which comes across as like, mm, yes, mm-hmm. no, like they, you know what I mean? They don't, they're sure. not, they're not. They're not honest. I don't know what there's yeah. probably fancier words you could use being the writer guru that you are. But no, I just seriously, I was just thinking about that. And I figure you would be honest because I would say seven out of 10 people I have on would be a short answer on like the ball busting of fishing. And as many people as you have traveled around with, you know, I don't know. I just I, I see it year to year going less and less. And it it saddens me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, dude, I, I, I've, I've, I've had a few occasions over the years of the one-word answer thing, but I mean, to me, like, that just makes our job harder because when that happens, you, ca- I, 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 time is money, so I can't say like, well, this was a bust and this show is not happening. I mean, that's our job to move it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be able to, to, to pick up the slack, but it's not fun. I, I think that's the thing is that, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a, I tell people all the time, I'm a fishing guy, right? And, you know, I'm doing some media stuff and it's not the other way around. Mm-hmm. And, and I, it's just like when you see an announcer, like, and this guy's busting somebody's chops as a football announcer. I know you could give two shits about sports, but you need a guy up there that understands what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. But yet you need to get somebody that's probably a little more polished to be able to do that. You know what I mean? And, and not have somebody that's the best talker in the world, but has no damn idea what's actually going on in the game to relay that to somebody that does. And I think it's it's like that with this. And yeah, I'm not an amazing podcaster. I think I can talk. I'm honest. You know, I, we got some great people on. And But like, you know, we get people privately all the time or me and producer do talking where we'll have a 15 minute thing. And God, it's a nightmare for him because we try not to edit these. We try to make them you know, kind yeah. of what it is. Sure. And it's just like, well, Ross, why did you not stop talking? It's like, because we had one word answers and producer dude had a nightmare and, and, of cutting this. And that's, then that, and that is always the outcome, right? Like when you have that person, I, I finish up and I'm like, well, you're going to hear a whole lot of me, which is not the point, but you got to do what you got to do. And I feel the same way when that happens. I'm just like, holy shit. I personally have been speaking for 10 minutes straight on my own podcast, but what are you going to do? 
we we had a guy on recently um it was a total total blind call which i haven't done a lot of to be perfectly honest you know mm -hmm. probably not as much as you and it was one of those deals where a friend was like because I'm, I'm i'm always trying to find somebody that's we don't do the clickbait thing you mm -hmm. know, and we're just trying to find like interesting stories of 10,000 people listen to it or a thousand or a hundred thousand. Good, whatever. And just try to put out the best stuff and just, and you know, with integrity, I guess you could say. And it was just one of those obvious things that I didn't think integrity of. Integrity like, and Ross Robertson. Oh, do I not go I in the same thing. sentence. Yeah. No, they do. But actually, thanks, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> So we had a guy on from uh, in producer. I guess I, we haven't talked about this, but your impression as well. We had a guy that was a, a fisheries biologist from South Dakota. Mm -hmm. We had him on. In case you don't know, that there was two walleyes state records broken like ten days apart. Yeah, my guys in the fisheries world didn't know a guy there because their guy had left and this and that. Well, it turns out the guy we you know knew one of our other guys, and my buddy lives down the street from him in South Dakota, and it was. We had this guy on, and you do not think of, I mean, I'm stereotyping here, you do not think of a fisheries biologist, especially from middle of nowhere, South Dakota, as being like, you know, Mr. Personality or, you know, sportscaster, whatever you want to call it. Producer, he was a rock star, was he not? Yeah, he was really good. He I mean, it, it, he had personality. He, he was really good. Yeah, and, but and, I mean, that's a shot in the dark, man. I mean, you win, you win sometimes, but I, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I get this all the time, like from listeners, they'll send me links to Instagram pages like you should check this dude out like this guy is really interesting, but I would never initiate that without like vetting like I'd have to do some email chains and get you on the phone fully, fully blind. You said I, I've dealt with that more than you have. Actually, I haven't, man. I've I've never done like complete shot in the dark. Well, we, back in the day, weren't we kind of? No, because believe it or not, uh, a handful Jerry. of people before I met you were like, this guy's really cool and catches big walleye. And I was like, okay, well, that's partial. Yeah, vetting. but that's still, but and that's still, like, that doesn't mean you can. We were wrong, except for the big walleyes <laughs> part. Otherwise, <laughs> he sucks. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Anyhow, so, and this is not a dig at producer, dude, but do you remember this one? This is going back and when we were kind of doing this thing, you got to remember, like, my producer guy's not a fisherman, right? I don't even, I guess your guy maybe a little bit or whatever, but he's a hunter we, more than a fisherman, my guy. Yeah. So yeah. again, this is not a dig. This is just like if we were talking about cosmetics or this or that, like if this is not what you do and we had Al Linder on, like I got Al on and he was, of course, Al, he's just, mm. he, bub. he had the flannel, he had the fuzzy grubs. Yeah, it was yeah, amazing. Yeah. And when so we so aggressively attack your trolling motor. <laughs> now do I have your attention? <laughs> exactly yeah and when, when we got done uh producer dude was like man that guy was really good mm -hmm. <laughs> and i was like yeah no shit man it's al yeah. linder yeah yeah that we were in a boxing match and you just saw mike tyson that's yeah. that's just what happened right there do you remember that producer that's not I a do, dig I at do. you yeah i do remember and that. It, yeah but, that's, but a again, dig at, that's a dig at me it's no it's really not no it's really not because i, I mean there are things that i we, we talk about this i there are times when you're doing this and i think this applies to any field where he brings up questions or things or with our regular other things that we do together, putting stuff together where him not fishing, it's a problem. And then there are other times where him not fishing is very beneficial because we're all in our box and we see what we see. And he, he, he speaks to those people that aren't, I fish for a living. I, this is what I do every day. Mm -hmm. And so you, you get both sides of that hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Oh. I don't know. But at any rate, the Al Linder one was just funny to me because he was like, yeah, that guy's really good. You know, like, yeah, mm, we should have him on again. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you want to, Can I tell you a quick one? Do you know who I almost had on? Joe Exotic. <laughs> no way. <laughs> dude, almost had him on. I'll, I'll tell from, you. From his, I'll, jail, I'll, from his jail cell? Yes. Yes, from his jail cell, right? And or, or uh, I, I have to, you know, as a guy who I, I don't says, think I don't have about, a I, I have not talked about this on Cut and Retail, so this is an exclusive for you, but I will tell you the oh, story if, you, if you'd like to hear it. I, all I know is this 30 seconds to go, producer, you better be writing the time down because this is our lead in. <laughs> Joe Exotic <laughs> does. So when I live like, from uh, jail, not long after I started Cut and Retail, like I'm just surfing around on social and somebody sends me uh a, a link to the new line of joe exotic tiger bass baits there's a whole line of joe exotic soft plastics right tiger what? king yeah 
with all these whacked out names. It's like it's all knockoff sweet beavers and chigger crawl. Like it's it's nothing you haven't seen before, but it's in this bright orange packaging. He tag, licensed it to yeah, some, he, the name to somebody. He licensed it to somebody. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, is there something here? And like I know in my head, I'm like, he doesn't know anything about these lures. He just licensed it. He needs the money. He knows nothing. So I go on the Joe Exotic Instagram page and I'm just like, fuck it. Can't hurt. And I message, I'm like, hi, Joe. I'm so and so. I have a podcast. And that dude, 45 seconds after I send the DM, I get one right back from him. And it just says, call Tammy. And there's a number. And I look at my wife and I'm 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 explaining all this to her. And I'm like, we think, hon, should I should I call Tammy? She's like, yeah call tammy so i text this number i'm like hi tammy dude this is all like within five minutes of initiation and then she gets back to me 30 seconds later and he's like joe gets 800 dollars for 15 minutes and i was like bye tammy right i was like there's there's no way but it would have been uh a connection via phone to him in jail right and I was like, there's, I was like, I was like, there's no way I'm throwing down 800 bones to talk to this guy for 15 minutes. That's, that's not even a whole show. Joe, Joe, yeah. Joe, stop for one second. I have to, now I'm interrupting you. We can agree you're better at the artsy fartsy packaging media. I might be a little better at the business. We need to come together. We're going to split the rate. Let's have a joint deal. This has never well, been done before. Two I, podcasts, one I, guest, I, I, one I, time. I, I'm in. I, I mean, uh, I can tell you right now, he's uh, still not busy, and we know exactly where he is. But uh, but before you before you do that, just hear live me from Cell Block D. Just hear just hear me out because that, this is what happened. So I I didn't even reply to that. I'm like, there's no way I'm giving this to you because here's the thing, right? I already know he's not going to be able to say anything about fishing. I know that. So. Carol Baskins. Let's what do am it. I going to do other than like kind of make fun of him, which is what people would expect. But like he wants 800 bucks. That's a donation to the Joe exotic free Joe exotic foundation or whatever the hell it is. So I passed on that. And then like three days later, Tammy texts me back. She's like, Joe's running a special this week, 15 minutes for 500. And I'm like, Oh boy. But this was my thing, dude. And I think you have literally to, 500 bucks. Yeah. You have to appreciate this, though, to a degree. My thing was just there's no way I can do this straight. Like, we're not going to talk about bass lures. We're not going to talk about bass fishing, you know, at, at, like, like, so this is going to garbage man interview him. Yeah. No, no, no. But I, I don't I, I don't know how to paint this in a positive light. And I just figure here is a very sad man that is extremely money hungry. He's sued a whole lot of people, and I'm like, I, it's just not worth it. Like, I don't need to get into some legal bullshit with Joe Exotic over a 15 minute joke spot on a podcast. Like, it's just not worth it. That's that was, that was where I ended up. You might disagree with that, but I was like, is this really worth it? I don't know. When it all comes down to it, you're probably being the adult. I am because what am I going to say? Like, oh, those uh, those Tiger King sweet beavers. What do you do, Joe? Did you test them out in the toilet? How do they work while you're making toilet wine in prison? Like, what am I supposed to say to the guy? You know, I think I think that you literally have the garbage man interview him. Yeah, and he's trying and he's trying to figure out what's going on. <sighs> That's gold, dude. See, I, I could be know. I could be I, I could be a producer too. You know? Yeah, yeah, you could. You could producer, produce dude. Do you have any any wise things that you would do as yeah, a what would you twenty some year old producer? Are you worried about about getting sued? That guy's no. I, I, I think I, I think you're exactly right with, with you know you got to think of the content like what like you said. What am I going to say to this guy? Like what you know what what's it going to be? There are a million people already out there doing jokes on Joe Exotic. What am I going to do that's new? What am exactly. I going to like? You know, adulting it, yeah. over here but, Adult, but okay okay here not producer so dude Let, let's explain there. to joe about the turtle man what's I, the turtle I, man so, this is this was when we were doing the tv show so let me just tell you something about producer dude he is one of those that he is like a tmz guy when it comes down to it he's all professional and he's all straight and then all of a sudden when some situation presents itself it's like all shit is is off and because i can see the potential of what it can be on he goes on straight tmz TV. mode yeah so do you want to tell him producer did you tell him a little bit and then i'm gonna finish it up with, yeah with so the we were we were out, we were shooting, oh, we were doing like Marina or we stopped in for gas or we went into, I don't remember exactly why, but we went into okay, this Marina. So 
we came in, we were done and we would needed to, but what we were waiting for was weather and this and that. And we wanted to have backdrops for shooting our B roll. This was for a real TV show. Mm -hmm. And so we, we needed to do our cutaways. And so we're sitting on a picking table with this. We went in producer dudes all like, you know, he wants the lake in the background. He wants the boats over here. And so we're shooting all these cutaways. That's where we went back in this Marina cut where the wind wasn't and the, all that shit going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they had this, uh, this guy that owned the Marina. It's a Turtle Creek Marina. This guy, they call now we're him. Getting sued. You didn't have they, to go there. <laughs> they call him turtle. Uh, his name is turtle because he must live at the Marina. I, I can't even imagine. He's he, still he literally lives in a trailer at the Marina. Yeah. Yes. And while we were trying to shoot, like I, I, he just came out and started mouthing, like just talking about stuff. And I was like, "Get a camera on that guy. Just follow. Just follow. I don't know what we're going to use it for, dude. But just follow. Just because he's hilarious. He's a character. But then the entire time we tried to shoot no, our stuff, course. he just was in the background, like trying to walk into the shop. I'll tell you okay. where you can catch him. I'll tell you this. I'll tell. I'm like, okay, it was fun for a while, but. <laughs> now, now because we couldn't we literally couldn't do it he's standing right next to the cameras and and anytime we move he would walk back he would walk back into the well shop. see that's an unfortunate situation but i do admire what you were going for because i and I, i've never really been able to pull this off but i always joke that like you know like the 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 dude you meet under the bridge like on the river like I don't know, man. Like, it would be fun to talk to that guy. Like, I love the idea of finding random weirdos like that and really picking them apart. But it's it's like, it, 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 does it does it really come? To, does, does it really work? And I'll give you an example. So, like on on Cut and Retie, I do Polaroid of the week. I have all these Polaroids that I gathered from from a couple tackle shops that went out of business. And some of these pictures are great. And I did one episode where I found four people in the actual Polaroids that I knew and brought them on the show. And they told the real story of their photo. And it worked out great because these were people that I, I knew. I knew who they were. They were like they, they've sprouted into nice, respectable people. But, dude, there's a million photos of these people who look like they lived under the bridge then and probably <laughs> do now. And I really want them on the show. But then I'm like how the hell would that carry for an hour like that? Like it, it could be amazing, but most likely it's, it's yeah. not going to work out. The key is know? always in all my television experience and I've done sports, live sports, uh, you know, full shows, all that stuff. The key is to just know when to move on. Like, yeah. okay, we, we, we got it. It was funny for three minutes. Let's move on now. Yeah. Like, and then the, one of the, one of the, the best things I ever did, I, in my opinion, that fell on completely deaf ears. Like it was a total flop, like in this same vein. Uh, I do a lot of fishing on the upper Delaware river for trout and that's big time wild trout country. New York city goes there to fish. So you have a lot of outfitters. Uh, it's drift boat deal. Like there's drift boats everywhere. So you have uh, shuttle services. You have these oh, local, these local Chico. townies. Yeah. See Ross knows you have these local townies who just, make tax-free cash money all season long running your car and trailer to wherever the boat's coming out at the end of the day. And, you know, all the guides have their favorite shuttle guys, their, their most trusted shuttle guys. And my buddy, Joe DeMolderis, used these guys, Hank and Chico. Hank was a large man who never got out of the pickup truck. Like, he just drove his truck around, and Chico was the runner. And Chico was a very nice guy. He was an old guy, bald guy, and he was like, Indian and Jamaican or Bahamian. So it was like this little like dude, like dude looks like he was from India, but he's talking like a Jamaican man. Like it was it was crazy. And he was this old guy, but then he'd be wearing like a billabong tank top <laughs> and like a flat brim because people would just give him shit. They'd be like, "Here, Chico, have a hat, whatever." And one day, one uh, one trip, I was up there and I said, "Chico, tomorrow afternoon, come over to Joe's place." And I threw a camera on this guy for like an hour and we would just ask random questions like, why, why did you leave Bob's windows down that one time? Or like he, I was, you know, have you ever had a shuttle client come on to you? And like he did and like would tell these wacky stories. And I did this whole series called Chico, the shuttle guy. And like, it really resonated with a handful of guides in other trouty spots that understand shuttle drivers. But to the to the general public, it, it like completely flopped. And I was like, dude, this is great. This is a real dude. This isn't made up. This isn't fiction. Like this dude is just this weird and quirky. But it, it didn't really work. And I was always like disappointed about that.
I'm 100% disappointed because I just think what the average person wants to see in this TikTok famous thing, you like the stuff that's successful. Yeah, if like, I put Chico huh? on TikTok now, like I be think huge. it was before its time, be right? Huge. Like there was no TikTok. Yeah. It was on Facebook. But if I if I did that again and like threw Chico the shuttle guy on TikTok, probably, but I refuse to get on TikTok. I will not do TikTok. I, I think that that was, I remember that. I remember his name, obviously. Like yeah. I thought that was brilliant. But getting well, back Ross, to the turtle man. Oh, I was gonna say. Remember the guy, the the guy down at the Maumee River. We tried to interview. We yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, I bet you got yeah. some characters down there, man. Oh, dude, you have you have no idea. But anyhow, back to the Turtle Man because this is just too great to to go over so quickly. Like producer dude said, he's in the back of our shot and he's he's photo bombing right before photo bombing maybe is what it is now. And shouting. Is, <laughs> but then, but then, he, then he, yeah, then he elevates, right? So now all of a sudden we can't get the shot. Well, he's in this golf cart, producer dude. Is this bringing back memories? He rolls in like throwing up gravel and dirt smoke. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm, gravel mm-hmm, smoke. Yeah, yeah. Literally, and and we filmed that TV show. Like our one camera guy was from ESPN. Like the, we were using the same cameras they used to shoot an ESPN football game, like college football. Yeah, game. yeah, like yeah. That's, yeah. That's what our guys were. It was way above what like what we were just doing, right? And this dude come in, and then he's standing by the camera. Of course, he doesn't understand the concept that, his, that he, there's also a shotgun mic right there, and mm-hmm. we're hearing him as much as you know we're hearing ourselves. So we have to stop, and so we're all sitting there, and he just stands there. It's like it's literally one of those. Do you remember then the girl came out from the marina, and yeah. she was like, "Oh, it's so Egg funny, the turtle yeah. man. Oh, turtle, it's so funny. Turtle. Oh, turtle. Oh, turtle. You're oh, so." T- <laughs> and then I just lit her up. I just lit her up after that but the funniest part of the turtle man is then we I, we literally um i i don't know if the um but the uh we're still would be under offenses at this point but we basically uh, i made him leave right? right so he goes around and you said under the bridge mm-hmm. there's an uh, overpass bridge that the boats go underneath there he's on top of it and he's trying to cast like at us do you remember this now yeah i remember him fishing yeah i remember him going and he's like i'll probably get... catch one right here i'm so good y'all you don't listen to that guy i'm the man i'm turtle man turtle man catches more than anybody you you, you bring up like so this is triggering a, an interesting point too oh, the, other, the, uh, the other risk <laughs> with trying to get something out of the randos that you meet these weirdos is that twice in my career including with chico it's like, even if you do it, you now run the risk of making this person feel like you just elevate them and it goes right yes. to their head. And even though the view count on Chico, the shuttle guy, wasn't good, for the next two years, I'd go up there and I'd have these guys like, F- you. I'm like, why? They're like, because now this dude's running around like he's freaking Ricky Martin up here, like he's famous. And like, all he talks about is, did you see my videos? And it's like, did Chico do that? Yeah. It's, it's in, t- yeah. He was like, a, he thought he was like the local celebrity in Hancock, New York, and got like really obnoxious about it. That's all he talked about was the field and stream videos he was in, <laughs> even though like nobody watched him. Um, yeah. Because you, 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 you got to be careful. Uh, doing that i once hired a drone guy years ago too during hook shots who was not a professional i mean he was a hobbyist but he didn't have the licenses and all that stuff and i was like yo bub uh i'll give you 200 bucks if you meet me here and fly down the river and all this stuff and uh suffice it to say like if this man had sex with his drone i would not be surprised like he that really was, he that was elevated. really about his drone like it was creepy <laughs> And like we're up on top of like the the flood wall on on the river down here, and he's like pacing and like going, <sighs> and I was like, "Hey man, you okay?" He's like, "I'm just getting in the right headspace before flying." And he's like, takes out his thing. He's like, flaps at two one, flap to it. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Right. So anyway, we shoot this. He does a couple passes. He's super nervous because he's a hobbyist drone dude I found on YouTube, and nobody's ever paid him to take, you know, baby out of the corner and go do some real shit for money here. So he does one pass. Then I take him to another spot. And, and long story short, um, he, he, he makes his pass flies under the train bridge and like, he's bringing it back. And there's like tall grass that he's trying to move out of the way while it's hovering. And I could have reached out and grabbed it, but I didn't. And like it malfunctioned and lost connection and just arced backward and exploded in the middle of the river. Right. <laughs> And then producer I producer dude, see, I got your drone uh, or your uh, thing. Then, yeah, that was a quick reaction. So, yeah. Then I felt he he cried. Tears were coming out of his face, and he was inconsolable. And to try and be a nice guy, 
I I offered to like try to swim out and get it because I knew this part of the river. And then I almost died. I was like, this is too deep, man. Like it's it's the water is just up too high. Like I'm going to die trying to get your drone. I went back and got it later with Kerber and filmed it for the, the hardcore tackle was like how to recover a drone with a snatch hook. So it like worked. But point being. I gave that guy one little taste, like just a couple hundred bucks to do one thing. And for months, he would send me proposals on how he wants to be my full time drone guy and travel to all the locations with me. And I, you know, I would only have to pay a hundred dollars a day plus his hotel room. I'm like, are you out of your freaking mind, dude? Like, I don't ever want to see you again, actually, like because that was a really weird day. But wow. th- that is the risk, dude. You give him like a little tip, whether it's a turtle man or drone guy or Chico. Yeah, it, that that tends to I, happen. I just hope we're getting to a point, and I think the world is like a uh, it's where like we a, can afford real drone guys, not have to hire <laughs> that. Dude. Well, no, or it's it's an up and down with. And again, I do stuff knowing it's going to not do well with the the world, the public, because mm-hmm. I just think it's funny, and I think it's funny how years later, all of a sudden, something catches on. Like that's the whole thing with digital. All of a sudden, videos start getting tons of views because rather it gets picked up by the algies or it's yeah, just now all of a sudden it's something is funny or relevant right yeah but like the turtle man do you remember this one producer dude we had three camera guys and one of them through through doing our stuff and one of them was like he was just one of us he was like funny i mean he was probably the least professional and competent of them do you producer dude do you, you guess yeah. which one this yeah, one i know was? who you're talking about and he was filming like all of a sudden because we have multiple cameras going on and then producer dude's just standing back and he's just producing and he's just checking things and batteries and whatever and all of a sudden we've got this you know two hundred thousand dollar camera that's doing you know a college football game in two days is zoomed in and i'm trying to do my so then we caught him on the jig and we 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 knew it and i'm looking down and this camera is zooming into turtle man's feet does this bring back memories yeah i was gonna bring it up He, he was wearing no shoes he he, but he had the tan line from where he had flip flops. But he had so much dirt on his feet. Yeah. You, no, I, I listen, listen, man. I I good good for you because as someone who used to make videos, like I, I always know, like like I watch the show like Hoarders or something like that, right? And where the, I mean, the whole thing is weird. But I always appreciate when editors and and camera guys and everything, like all of a sudden they'll just cut to like an extra long shot of like a dog turd in an old Whopper (laughs) container. And I'm like, I know like that caught your eye. And even though you had no idea whether it would be useful later, it's like I'm going to do 15 seconds of the dog turd in the ancient Whopper container. And then like the editor is right in sync and like somebody's doing VO talking about the mess and like you give the whole eight seconds of the dog turd. I'm like, really? Like, that's how I shot stuff. It'd just be like the weirdest little bullshit. So I would have done the same thing. I'd be like, dude, get make sure you got that guy's feet. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> that These are my people. You know, yeah. these are my people. Yeah. Now, yeah, he was yeah. the worst. That guy was the worst camera guy. He, he, we, we could have a three minute fish fight and he'd miss it somehow. Right. Yeah. But he was good for that. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's why producer dude had him on the B, I guess. But yeah. Any rate. Yeah. The Clarence one that you brought up, producer dude, should we, we, we should we tell him about that one? That's another sure. one of those. Yeah. He's like the cheek one, but it was so interesting. I'm, I'm going to try to quickly make this tightened up. The The Maumee River has thousands of people that are elbow to elbow in knee deep water. The mm-hmm. walleyes come up there by the millions. Yep. And it's realistically real talk minus a very small window. It's a snagging deal. You sure. have walleyes oh, yeah. on top. It, I've never done it, but I've read enough about it and talked to you about it enough. It's, it's right. I, I get what's up. So yeah. ironically, how and again, it's way too long of a story for, for everything here. But how we got together with the TV show that we did for almost a decade was because of originally them wanting to do a local history piece. A portion of it was just, hey, we need to find somebody to shoot this fishing thing because we can't not talk about fishing yeah. being here. And they, I sat down in a production meeting, not knowing producer dude or anything at this point, all these suits as we call them. And they're like, we've got to go to the Maumee River. And I'm like, it's all snagging. Like, I'm not going to go fishing in the river as a segment. I was like, I will go talk about it and explain it. But like my street cred of like, here I am. Here's Ross snagging a fish because yeah. these people didn't understand the significance of yeah, that. It's, it's a hard thing. Yeah, I get it. So we 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 go do this thing and, and they were didn't want to do it at the right time of year. It was everything was just wrong. But there's still people down there. So we come to the conclusion that we're going to go down there and shoot a segment talking about the history of this. And there's all these vendors and they have vans with like pegboards on the side. They slide in, they're selling jigs and lead heads and all this stuff. Yeah. 
Well, when I was a kid, I would fish that all the time. The white bass run. I mean, I had no money. This is no boat, right? Like this. I'm, is I'm what just you curious do. for cultural reasons. When you were a kid, was it as insane or is it like quadruple million D now compared to when you were a kid? I think it was worse back in the day. Really? So it's kind of like the steelhead fishery. Like when you were allowed to snag salmon, it was actually crazier than it is now. I, I think so because I think now. Again, whole nother topic that I kind of was had in my mind to talk to about you and here a little bit, so I don't want to get too into it. But yeah, I, I think the internet, you I would go down there come hell or high water. Like there was a number you could call to find out what the river level was. And sure. you know, at a certain point, like you die because you can't go, you can't wait to be over your head and the current's so strong. But we went, like same thing, night fishing, right? Mm -hmm. Like back in the day, I used to fish on the piers in junior high, high school and that casting for crankbaits for walleyes. We went, it didn't matter. It didn't, unless the wind was 100 miles an hour blowing in your face, that sure. you couldn't, you quite literally couldn't make a cast. Now with the internet and Facebook and these groups, Lake Erie, you know, peer fishermen or whatever all these things are, people just like, hey, is the bite happening tonight? Thinking about heading out, don't want to waste my time. Yeah, I know. That's how we fish now. Not you and I, but I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And so, so that I think has changed because now people realize how shitty the fishing is 75% of the time. So you right. don't have those those people going down there but at any rate so we got this guy clarence i bought jigs from him as a kid because again you're down there you lose all your jigs or you know you, hey you're actually do catch fish and they're on a chartreuse and you just drop 30 of those in the river so for a dollar clarence had a little baggie mm -hmm. you know he he was like he was like our legal drug dealer and you'd wade back up and you'd get this stuff from him and he had the same spot and i'm sure it's no different than your jersey area things or any of these other little Nicks oh I, 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 I i've already lined up my follow-up but you finish yeah go ahead yeah and so you got these little these little deals there and i'm i say to producer dude i was like dude clarence like he he he'll probably even remember me you know because like you used to talk to Clarence every day and we bought our jigs from Clarence. You don't buy them from somebody else. You go to Clarence. Like there's this, like this loyalty, this and Clarence, sure. goes, Hey, he ain't got no chartreuse and orange there, but he's got some inside the van. Cause he knows I'm a regular, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like, he was my legal drug dealer. Yeah. So we go up to Clarence and, and producer did again, jump in at any point here, but we go up to the van and we're filming just a segment about, Hey, how much people this brings in. And we just want Clarence to say, Hey, I see license plates from all over. And you know, for, for one month, man, they're just, this place looks like a zoo. Yeah. And he wigs out on us. Ooh. Like he, he like wigs out to the point, like get that camera out of here. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. Yeah. He, I mean, he was, he's like, people start seeing, they come down here. They're going to jump me. And I, I think there might've been some, some tax stuff. I'm going to guess involved. Well, I think his, <laughs> his point was the last time yeah. he was on the news, he got robbed. Like yeah, people that's what broke he into his trailer and stole all his stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I kind of get that. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. we literally, we're talking like not even Mr. Twister quality twister tails and like right. homemade lead jigs that are like half, you know, tire weight still in it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And uh, hooks that, that they don't even have a name or what they right. are. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 he was getting I, the wish app stuff. 30 years before the wish app existed somehow. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, but yeah he dude he he didn't just say no hey sorry he wigged out is that yeah. fair producer dude yeah he was he was awfully loud i i think he just was like no way i'm not doing it last time i got robbery they robbed me and he just yeah he was did you at not, least get all that on camera like just uh, like well we out. did but we couldn't we use did it but it, it, yeah. it was so it was it he was wasn't so... gonna he wasn't gonna sign the release form for you yeah no but you know and I, I think the thing like some of the video stuff we've done together there are those little segments or things and maybe now it's just the intro on on facebook or instagram if we were doing this today yeah but i think for the people that kind of are are our people air yeah. quotes yeah like that's the stuff again on our tv show not applicable at all now mm -hmm. with what we're doing that's the intro dude like and but still so many of these people that are quote serious about themselves like they wouldn't use that where i'm like dude that's 100 percent. that that's our deal like yeah, my 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 uh my my counterpart to your clarence uh i i i talked to him for the hook shots podcast which is going way back but up in pulaski there was this very famous guide uh skeeter i forget if it was bevins or blevins right you had me at but, skeeter a skeeter but i met him years ago through a guide buddy of mine and and he's kind of like a local legend lives on the river up there but he doesn't fish or guide much anymore he just uh paints beads and makes flies in his basement all day and he doesn't even sell them commercially he just gives them to his guides and uh a friend of mine said we're gonna go over and talk to skeeter you should meet this guy 
Uh, you know, he's very interesting. He's doing very different things. And, and you know, every, you know, people in the know say his beads and flies are the best. So he's this like frail little old man, cool dude, like super religious and nice. But, and like this basement dude was just millions and millions of beads. And they are the prettiest beads I've ever seen. And his whole thing was like UV coloring. So I guess not that many people were doing that. So to look at the bead, it doesn't look different than you hit it with the black light. And he's, but he would like hand paint blood dots on all thousands and thousands and i remember going down in his basement and i'm looking at all this stuff and he's very talkative very interesting but then there's also like a guy in a bathrobe like in the corner <laughs> just, just slumped over in a chair and i don't know if that was his son or a friend he did not speak he literally was just like a dead guy in a chair in a corner in a bathrobe with like the slide on slippers on. I shit you not. Right. <laughs> so, slips. so now, slips. yeah. So now, now we're in this dude's basement, which has couches and a TV. Like it's a finished basement, partially finished, whatever it was. Huge, huge house. So he's going through all this stuff about like, Oh, you know, it's a secret powders and secret UV and this, that, and the other thing. And, um, He's like, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn the lights off. So he goes and flicks the lights off in the basement. <laughs> and I assume that like, all the eggs and flies are going to glow. Dude, he flicks that shit on and the thing lit up like New Year's Eve, but like there's like a ham sandwich in front of the dead guy that's glowing. The TV remote is glowing. Like everything had this glow. And I'm like, you boys are just down here all day doing this, inhaling like God knows what. Like your internal organs are probably coated in UV cure resin or whatever it is. But he gave me an incredible podcast. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he's still around, but it was an incredible podcast. I love those people. I love the Skeeters and Clarences. But it's just, it's so hard, so few and far between. I, I just started thinking about movies. Uh, a certain John Travolta movie coming to, uh, to mind <clears throat> with the uh, the guy in the bathroom in the basement. Oh yeah, the Gimp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not putting that one past me. Dude, did you see on Instagram my, my turtle? Somebody gave me a, a mounted snapping turtle, right? Oh. And I had a naming contest, and uh, the winning name was Marcellus Wallace. Boom. That, that's 100% where I was going. And uh, I know exactly where you were going. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's why I appreciate it. How many times have I like texted you or called you from some flea market? Because we're both kind of flea market guys. Or I know. I love it. We both, yeah, it's funny. The last time you were out here, I don't know if we ever talked about that, but like we had we had one blow day. Somehow we got two decent weather days and one day that was just crap. And like of all people, I think people would not expect that you could enjoy a day of junking with. You were, were one of them. But like we had we had a black. Hey, which reminds me, can we talk about let's talk about that. Uh, what did you do with your, your giant propeller that you bought? Because as I recall, you found all these things in our junk shops here, all this nautical weird stuff that you were like, if this was in an antique store in Port Clinton, Ohio, it would be 500 bucks. And this dude wants 50 bucks for it. We spent half the day. Yeah, he, he, The dude, producer dude, he buys like a hundred pound wheel off like, you know, the Edmund Fitzgerald. And he's like, can you just ship this home for me when you get a chance? I'm like, fuck that way. Like, no, no, no. We're going to pack and ship right it's now. And one. you are throwing down your card. I'm not handling that for you. Are you crazy? But, oh, but what'd you do with your wheel? Where is it? Well, it's funny you should say that because I have since done out. Ironically, I was talking about this at the show that I just left here, like literally 10 hours ago. Uh, my not uncle uncle like everybody's got one of those right everybody's got listen. not uncle uncle yeah yeah he listens to the podcast but so he sees this thing in my office and goes what the f is that <laughs> <laughs> and i go oh man you know i'm doing this thing because like i i i really like like nautical stuff and especially oh not chinese shit okay yeah like real stuff no this so, was like, a this heavy duty brass prop and you were looking at all kinds of oars and pat we have a ton of that stuff here nobody buys it yeah <laughs> I, i'm gonna back up and tell part of the story if you remember because i i don't know if out of kindness you didn't bring this up so the guy that owned this it was at one of those like consignment stores mm -hmm. we pick it up and move it around there's no price on it we don't see a price and so she's like that's john john's at the end of his life that's our words not hers mm -hmm. but we have to call him and see if his caregiver is there you know 
know, that type of, you remember this? Yeah. And she's like, and I'll see if we get an answer. So we walk around, basically probably would have left and, and you were patient because you're a junker too. And so she comes back and she's like, John has said, um, what would you like to do or whatever? How about $50 or something? Yeah. Well, as I told you, that prop is a thousand bucks because it might even been usable for somebody. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, it was a big, big prop. Yeah. It, it's a it was a giant brass prop that you would use on an inboard motor but again matching the diameter if it's in tune blah blah blah, blah like whatever yeah we're using it to put it on in my office right yeah yeah so again yeah it's like well you know it's 50 bucks is reasonable in my mind me and you were talking like hey how much would you put, sell this well it's gonna cost me 100 bucks to get it home or or more yeah so i'm like yeah so so you're still coming in with shipping under what you pay for it in a store down the street yeah yeah, yeah, where yeah. You so yeah. Yeah, and we pulled you. I'm not going to tell everybody how we pulled some strings on making that happen, too. But at any rate, so I don't know creative. what strings you're talking about. We got creative. Remember, we used one of my sponsor shipping accounts, and it was like half the price. Those are strings you pulled. I just yeah, drove yeah, yeah, you to yeah, wherever yeah. you dropped it off. Don't yeah, say I we. Don't, I no didn't juke your sponsors out of shipping. Get out of here with that. We we took care of it. It just it was it you was took beneficial. care of it. I drove you to the UPS store. That's all. There you go. Okay. You're, you're 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 in a great accomplice. <laughs> Anyhow, so. We like buy this thing for 50 bucks. We legit 100% did not see a price tag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We get it. We're, we're walking outside and you're like, we're, I'm carrying this because it's big. It's a couple feet across. Yeah. And you're like, uh, dude, uh, dude. <laughs> and I look and it was like, there was a price tag and it was like 700 bucks. Oh, you remember it wasn't that? that much. It couldn't. Yeah, it, it, was, no. it was something insane. Yeah, it was. It was like yeah. 700 bucks. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, who, being I over a hundred bucks, but seven hundred, seven hundred dollars. Who, who would have You can buy a full body Mako mount at a store here for less than seven hundred bucks. Well, your 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 thrift stores, and I think that that's part of it. Is is when you get to these different places, like you can get a little like lantern deal now because of HGTV, right? right. Like the house flipper people. And it used to be five bucks or an old minnow bucket, like the old metal minnow buckets. Tons of them. A dollar. Well, yeah. and that, that's the problem. Around here? I, I, we don't need to turn this into the flea market flip podcast, but to, <laughs> to that end, man, like, um, like my, my wife really enjoys like antiquing too, but like, she likes an antique store that is well put together. Like, like everything is staged and in play. No, yeah, I like the no. places where it's like, I'm going to look in here and I might get tetanus because that's where you get deals. Like you want the place <laughs> where this stuff looks like it was just heaped in the corner with a bulldozer and there's no prices because you're right. I grew up with an amazing uh, flea market right down the road. I think we might have tried to go to it, but there weren't any vendors that day or something. But I've been going there since I was a kid and you find the coolest things. Well, now... Dude, you could have like a freaking stick of, uh, you know, uh, bubble yum from 1986. And the guy's like, well, it's an antique piece of bubble yum. I'll need to I'll do I'll do 125 on it for you. I'm like, dude, not everything that's old is an that's antique right. and work when worth money. It's it's ridiculous. But you're right, man. Like it's in an established antique or consignment store. It's so freaking hard to stumble on something we that's a really good deal. <laughs> We've got a little um, a marina here, and it's like the average median age is about 85, I think. And mm -hmm. so when they have their little swap meet, you go in there. Yeah, and that's talk what you go to, man. Yeah. You talk to the wife. You do not talk to the dude. The yeah. stuff is there because the wife says, we're moving to a condo or we're downsizing. Yes. And this, and they literally were giving me like dock ropes and bumpers still in the package. You know, things yeah. that you're like, I don't really need that, but for a dollar, um, I'm going to... I. I I'll take that. And, and that's that's what it is, man. It's like estate sales. Not that I go to many of them, but really, and I, I hate this because it's not as fun. But like, as you know, you've been down here in my studio. I got a million, uh, you guys can't see them, but I got a million old pieces of taxidermy, all these fish over here. I picked them up over the years at garage sales and stuff, but and some from antique stores where they'd be reasonable. I have not seen one in an antique store that's been reasonable, like not outrageous in forever. The place to do it is on Facebook Marketplace, which is a headache all unto itself. But usually if they're on there, it is a wife who's like, this is going ASAP and I will take the first $25 for that 50 pound king salmon that somebody puts in my hand. Like, well, that's the way to do it. And to preface this so people understand, because I have called you with many. You want me to pick this up because you don't yeah. want something that's like, man, that's a piece of art. You want something that looks like a piece of shit. I do. I like them cruddy. Together. Yeah, cruddy. Yeah. yeah. Aside from the cost or whatever. But you've shot down the ones that I have uh, located for a, you. A lot of it because they're repeats. At this point, I have so much of that stuff that it would have to be like a really unique fish or so, you know, something that I don't have. What did I, what did I just see? Somebody... 
sent me it was something crazy i think i feel like it was something south american it was like a golden dorado or something but clearly mounted in like the 70s before everybody and their mother with five thousand bucks was going to south america to catch golden dorado like that if i saw i would buy but i mean dolphin bass even walleyes salmon that stuff's a dime a dozen i don't need another freaking mounted trout you know i just have so many of them you know, one of the things I had in my mind was just like as I'm driving down the road and I just think of these wacky things, you're like, where does this apply? But I know you're the one and we kind of talked about it, but I use the term salty captain versus tourist captain in my mind. Like, okay. so I, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize, you know, like when we go saltwater fishing, I don't drag my carpeted ranger down to the Gulf of Mexico, right? Like right. It, it's not cost uh, effective. And aside from that, even if it was, I still understand being a guide. I understand the value of what you get from a guy aside from just what may be the factors that, you know, Joe and Sue Smith see, right? Yeah. Okay, Whether it's so. the... Yeah. I'm following. Go ahead. So, it, but in a different way as whether it was hook shots or you're the parent company when you worked, you know, as the editor of, of a fishing magazine and all of a sudden now you're going around with a lot of guides. Maybe it's a media trip, which is kind of different. That's maybe more towards the tourist things a little bit. Yeah. But you... <clears throat> Give me something here, and I, I want to do a little go back and forth because we've never talked about this with the different types of captains. Like catching fish for some people is important. Other people really want somebody to just schmooze them and make sure they have a really fancy sandwich there, right? So like to me, that salty captain, like some of the best guys I've fished with, I've wanted to punch in the face, and they're assholes, but they're so good at what they do. From my angle, I'm like, I can, I just like watching this guy. Like this is some, this is like Beethoven playing you know, something, or this is like Billy Joel playing the piano here. So you got to respect it. Even if he's kind of a dickhead punch in the face, but really good. <laughs> if you're One watching, guy if, fits that mold right if there. You're watching, yeah. If you're watching YouTube right now, <laughs> Captain Ginger was selected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, look, man, I've, I have fished with everybody, every style of captain. And I, I do know exactly what you mean. And I, it's, it's a hard thing to answer, though, because I, I know what you mean by a tourist captain, and I have bumped into a lot of those. And, you know, you end up out with this guy, and usually, hate to say it, those are the guys that wind up on media trips, particularly because there's a difference between a big company like a Pure Fishing putting a media trip together, or you'll get these peripheral trips where it's like, you know, these guys make coolers or whatever it may be, and they're putting the fishing trip together and they're by nature uh, maybe not as dialed on who to hire for their trip as a pure fishing would be. And there's nothing wrong really with tourist guides when they're catering to people who have no idea what they're doing and just want to go out and catch something. That is fine. I feel like these guys are the ones that tend to be the part timers. You know what I mean? Like they do something else in town, but you know, maybe they're a little cheaper, whatever it may be. Um, and I've been incredibly frustrated a lot of times with those guys. And you got to hold your tongue because especially if you're there on somebody else's dime, but you can tell right away, like, oh, I see, we're going to do this and this, and that is your program. And you do not stray from that program under, and, and, and the reason there's a clash, I'll never forget this. The very first media trip I ever went on in my entire life, ironically with pure fishing, they hired these great dudes. They don't know me. They've never met me before. I'm a kid. I'm an intern, right? And we go out and we're snook fishing around these mangroves. And a uh, guy gives me a bobber and a live pilchard. And he's like, yeah, I mean, you want to get that as, you know, close to the edge or under the mangroves if you can. And like turns his back on me. And just, you could tell, he just assumed that that very first cast was going right into the mangroves. And we're going to do a lot of untangling. And I casted it he, right he under. Tying, he was rigging another rod. Correct. Turned. Correct. And I sent it right under the mangroves and caught a snook on the very first cast. And he was like, holy shit. I'm like, holy shit, what? He's like, you're like the first outdoor writer I ever took out that could actually do that. And then once he saw that, then it was like, all right, these bobbers and pills, okay, I'm taking you. We're going to go do this shit that like I'm really excited about. And that's fun when you make that connection and somebody sees like, oh, I can push this dude. Like this dude can handle something a little more interesting than like the standard media trip. Here's what I'm doing with these writers. But I've also ended up with a ton of guides that they just don't. And I end up being the one like, 
So we're still uh, staying here, huh? Like we're not going to go like there's we're not going to try somewhere. And it's rare. And I do believe in like you always listen to the guide. See, it's a conflict of interest for me because I preach that all the time. Like you listen to your guide. And I think if you don't fish a lot, you have no choice but to do that. You have to listen to what he or she says. They are the local experts. But when you fish a lot, I pick up on that. And I've had many of those scenarios where I'm just like, there is no other trick up this sleeve. And we're not leaving here all day. And that's it. Well, maybe maybe another phrase that I use is, is Country Steve actually got on this one. He has a long story that I'll let him tell on another podcast, but cruise ship captains. So these people get off and you can choose destination A, B, or C. You got a three-hour or six-hour sure. deal. Yeah. And I, I had one of those. A girl I was dating had a company, I don't know what you want to call it, package that they won. And like mm -hmm. there was 50 people from the company and you get to check. You want to go get a massage or your fishing trip? Well, we chose the fishing trip. <laughs> And we go out there and there was a bunch of them and there, and there was a lot of people this deal. So, I mean, they probably had a hundred people on multiple mm -hmm. boats, you know? And, and again, I'm, I'm looking at things and I didn't get all up crazy in it and tight with it. Cause it's just like, we can't make this into a tournament. Right. So I'm just trying to be lay, lay back. Obviously there's some people around there who know what I do. I didn't say nothing. We get on this boat with this guy and we go out and you knew we were going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And now I'm listening to the radio with these other guys who, you know, again, paying attention to the boat names that are smoking mahi because they're just going to go out there and catch some like small mahi. And but they're, they're sure. stretching the string. And this guy, we had a barracuda and it got all jacked up. And so I retied the wire leader with an Albright. And the guy is just like, to your point, he looked at me and he goes, um, what do you do? And I said, mm -hmm. I, I work in the outdoor space because yeah. I didn't want to be the guy that's like, well, I'm a professional guide or, or whatever. Sure. Right. But at the same point, I like mean, you bottom, didn't, but you wanted to. But anyway, hundred percent, hundred percent. But but you you know big picture. So like an hour later, though, it was one of those deals where it was like, to your point, it's like, guy, dude, five miles away, these people are smoking mahi. Now here and here and here's the difference, and this is why I was hoping this would would maybe get us a, a scenario or a story that you've been around. And I know you're in a different angle of this. I literally said to the guy, I said, hey, uh, th those guys are in, uh, you know. 60 feet of water or whatever and we're in 25 like is there any chance we can bounce out of deeper? yeah <laughs> yeah and and the guy was like well you know and he basically admitted on our way in when we we're done like well you know i i get prepaid for these things and my tips pre-included so i just go <laughs> out and come back and i just thought to myself though like because i i've done bigger corporate trips i have multiple people that you know work for me running these trips if i come in and I, you know, don't catch a limb and everybody else does. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little burnt. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if, and if it was because of something I didn't do, if people lose fish or something happens or somebody gets, if I don't do what I need to do. And if I don't have, when I lose that, I'm like this, I yeah. gotta be honest with you. Now you're not going to win every day or whatever, but this guy knowingly was like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to give you a boat ride. And when it gets a little warm, we're going to move. 300 yards and uh, get a little get the flies off you type of thing mm -hmm. and i just thought like going back to this ramp and just watching all these people cleaning these fish and of course these are nine out of ten people that are in this event 90 out of 100 never probably have fished before sure. and they're just like oh my god even though they're dinky ass mahi that you'd be like oh, well, listen whatever. listen listen you can't you can't fault people who don't fish often for being excited about what you and i consider a mundane day right no no, no but that's what i mean that the, the, it didn't it wouldn't have taken as much for the p other people that were in this boat that i didn't really know to be very, very happy. Where if me and you would have been there, we'd been like, yeah, well, but it, well, it didn't take I, I, much for this guy to just do what should have been done. And it kind of pissed me off. I mean, so a couple things to say about that. One, one will actually be helpful to your listeners, right? So I'll share this, but I know exactly what you mean. I remember the first time I ever went to an Island in my life was to Aruba over spring break, right? When I was in college. And of course, I feel like, like I'd like to see some video from that. There ain't none. Uh, but anyway, I was like, I got a fish. I don't know anything about Aruba. Uh, tip one, don't ever go to Aruba. Tip two, definitely don't go there and fish because it sits right in the trade winds and it's like hammer down rough seas all the time. But I mean, that is the racket. You walk around Arangistad at night down on the docks and it's just all these dudes with sport fishers backed into the street cat calling who wants to fish tomorrow you want fish tomorrow fish? And, and i don't know i'm a kid i don't know and you know guy flags me down i'm like yeah i want to fish tomorrow he's like you want to catch wahoo i'm like hell yeah i've never caught a wahoo dude like you know you give him 50 bucks to hold the boat you give him the rest in the morning whatever we pile on this boat we went out uh, two miles out it was eight footers 
he puts out the same tie, like the wire line on the reels looked like it had not been changed in 30 years. The lures hadn't been changed. The hook hadn't been sharpened. Uh, we caught three Wahoo in two hours. None of them were very big. And I, I mean, I had no idea what was going on, but I'm still, it's just, I'm inquisitive. You get Marlin here? Yeah, further out. Okay. You ever get Dolphin here? Yeah, further out. I'm, I, I, like, I'm just trying to like have a rapport with this dude, hoping he'll be like, yeah, do you, would you like to try for this or that? But that's not what they are about, man. Like you have to recognize that they basically, when you go to an island, Mexico, not everybody, and I'll get to that in a second, uh, they do not actually give a shit about your satisfaction. And the less you know, the, like the dumber you are in terms of fishing ability and and what and expectations, the happier they are. Now, I had on my show, great guy, Jorge Acosta. He has like the number one YouTube channel in Spanish, and he lives in Sinaloa, Mexico. And I don't know if you get this, but I get a lot of people reach out to me and they say, hey, Joe, I'm going to Cabo. Any recommendations on a guide? I'm going here. Any recommendations on a guide? And I don't have them. I don't fish internationally enough to be like, oh, my guy is so-and-so. But I posed this question to Jorge. I said, what is your advice for, for the couple that is going to Puerto Vallarta or Cabo or the Bahamas or wherever they're going? And, you know, they're going on a family vacation. They're not going there to fish. They might have one day. What do you tell them? And he's like, you look on Instagram. For as bad as Instagram, as for many people hate social media, he's like, do the homework and Find a guide on Instagram where you are going and pay attention to them for a while. Look at what they're posting. Look at how frequent he said you do not ever, ever take the pamphlet in the lobby of your resort or let the concierge book you a fishing trip. Never. He's like, nor do you if, if somebody is catcalling on the street in town while you're out having a rum runner. The guys who are out there getting shit done do not have their kid barking on the street at night trying to wrangle up tourists. You do not go with them. He's like, the, the, the foreign guys, the island guys, the Mexican guys, they use Instagram as good as anybody else, and they want the business. You look for the guy with the high traffic, high numbers, the frequency, but you'd never, no matter how schwank that resort is, you never go, ah, oh, I'd like, uh, me, me and my brother would like to go fish tomorrow. Oh, sure, sir. We'll get you a boat. You'll be on the, the blue, uh, blue Wahoo too. Don't ever do that. Never. That makes a whole lot of sense. I, I think to me that's Captain Obvious, right? But maybe some people G -G that don't. I, it yeah. wasn't when I was in Aruba. I was I was the rube that they were looking for. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be obvious to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? exactly. If I, exactly. Trip, I mean, I'm not a fisherman. I'd just be looking for something to do. Like he's like trying to get his money back on the Blue Wahoo too. He's going to Puerto Vallarta next week. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Cancel so, trip. Cancel trip. I'm surprised in that that you didn't like walk down the dock and see knowing you like I do and look at the guy's rods and reels and see that rigging disaster before you even did it. Bro, were, were I'm, you too? I'm, hey, I'm, did you have too many chimichangas and no? Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm 19 years old. At the time, it was the furthest I ever was away from my house. I had very little to no experience blue water fishing, and I think uh, it's fair to say. If you grew up salty, if you grew up like where I did, always had access to salt water, uh, you have this notion because you've been reading saltwater sportsman your whole life and you've been, you know, watching George Poveromo and all this stuff that if you are somewhere that is tropical and warm, if you all you need to do is get out on a boat and it is freaking Shangri-La. Like if you pick an island, any island, go off the island, put out a trolling spread, you are just getting covered up. And that is not true. Like, that is not true. So the naivety uh, of that era, I'm there on spring break with some buddies, is like, doesn't matter. Makes no difference who we go out with because I'm in Aruba. You go a mile outside that inlet, you're in a thousand feet of water. Any idiot could go out there and drop a spread and just be catching blue marlin and giant bulldolphin and trophy wahoo. But that's not, that's how you learn. That is not true. That is not true. And people don't seem... Everybody thinks that when you throw down that precious 500 bucks, 2000 bucks, whatever it costs you to charter a boat, you'd like to believe that, uh, the, that, that, that money is creating a pact, right? Where the captain is like, these people just gave these hardworking people just gave me their money. So I am going to pull out every stop 
to make sure they have the most exceptional fishing experience of their life. False. Instead they want to get catfished. They, they, yeah, they, they basically like these these guys that I fish with in Aruba. I mean, they they didn't even. I, they they were like two like surfery looking dudes from from I forget which country owns them but uh, like uh, Austria or Finland or some I, I forget Netherlands I think own uh, own Aruba but really yeah it's it's yeah it's Danish I don't know somebody will f- will figure it out and write in but I think anyway you're right. I think it's Netherlands yeah I think it's the Netherlands own Aruba so. I mean, were these guys even fishy? No, my my guess is, dude, there's some boat owner. It was it was a nice boat. It was a Hatteras, but it was old. I mean, it was beat. It wasn't like super luxury. But I don't even you, I don't even know how much passion or interest the guys that took us out even had for fishing because it is just a racket. Basically, go out, hook the guy something. If he hooks me yeah. one ten pound wahoo. I caught a fish. It's a boat ride. I didn't catch fish. You're not coming back regardless. Like that's the tourist deal. And this guy could sell coconuts and make 10 bucks a day, or he's going to make a thousand dollars a day on a boat. That's yeah. Worth 30 grand. When when I, when I had Jorge on again, great dude. Um, you know, he was talking about like, he's done that. Like he's traveled to different countries and he fishes all over the damn place. I forget where he was in South America somewhere with his wife and they're just out for the evening, and he knows what's up. Like, he knows he's, he's well-connected, but he got barked at down by the marina. Hey, you want to go fishing tomorrow? We catch him, man. We catch all the big ones, man. And, like, just to play around, he was like, oh, yeah, what do you catch? And he's like, normally when you say that, what they'll do is they'll keep one nice tuna or one nice wahoo on ice for the night before cutting it up so that when the gringos walk by and want to go fishing, they bust out this freaking giant wahoo and they're like, oh, take my money right now. So he's like, I was messing with him. Like, I just wanted to see, like, what are you going to pull out of that that ice box? What are you going to show me? And it was like a 15 pound Jack Creval. Now, <laughs> you and I know, I mean, Jack Creval are fun. I love catching them on fly and stuff, but like, I ain't paying nobody $1,000 to troll a Jack Creval on a big sport fish. I mean, that's, I want, you know, that's, but how many people who know nothing are going to see, they're not even going to know what the hell it is. They're just going to go, oh, look at that. It's the biggest fish they've ever seen, but it's a 15 pound bycatch. Nobody wants to target Jack Creval. It's and a racket. You know and, and that's a funny thing. I gave advice to a guy that I know who's a, a guide and very good. We got on Jack's down mm-hmm. there in the Gulf and yeah, he was just, he was just like Love this. And he was just, I mean, he was throwing a fit in the boat and I'm like, we're on spinning rods. We're catching these things. And it looked like an aquarium because the other ones were lacing up on us. It was like world war three going on with these fish. They're damn near attacking the boat. Yeah. I, it was a hoot. Like, yeah, I know. Hey, those don't eat great. Um, well, yes, that's not, but they fought hard. They look cool. We took a picture like yeah. as a guy who's still fishing. I was like, I was like, man, don't, don't necessarily run these things down. I just, I just wrote an article for Angler's Journal not long ago about how everybody's dream is to fly to like Vanuatu or wherever to catch giant Trevallis to catch GTs. But then they snubbed their noses at Jack Creval and we get some pretty damn big ones in this country and they are related and they do all the same things as a GT. And the funny thing is, yes, I understand they don't grow to 200 pounds or 100 pounds, but most people who spend that money to go to the other side of the planet, they think they're going to catch 100 pound GTs and they catch 30 and 40 pounders and they're like tickled pink. Bro, you could have went to Texas to do that, right? But you were talking about salty guides versus touristy guides. Uh, same thing. I was down in the Gulf once. I won't say exactly where, but I was fishing with this dude. Nice enough guy, like super nice guy. But, you know, it's it's trout and reds. Like that's what these guys fish for is trout and reds. And we're out there in the bay, and, I mean, there are 20-pound Jack Creval's acres of them just blowing bait out of the water, mullet. I mean, it was chaos. And we were like, yo, put us right there. So he goes over. I had a fly rod. I'm, like, yeah. getting smoked. I'm watching this, like, real drain. And we, 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 me and my buddy, we both catch these two giant jacks. And he kind of acted like, okay, you got that out of your system. Can we go back to shrimping uh, reds and speckled trout now? And we were like, no and he was like uh, he was like upset and to my mind it's like dude if you're a guide even if the thing that you are doing right now is not what you personally want to be doing if your people are happier than pigs and shit throwing stupid flies at jack Creval's, didn't i just make your job easier like shouldn't you be happy now it's like wow these guys are having a blast no he was like disgruntled the entire time that we were spending time chasing these 20 pound jacks when like we should be over there with a shrimp and a popping cork trying to catch keeper specs to bring back for dinner. 
Like, I don't understand that mentality. Well, if your people are happy, leave them alone. Well, maybe, maybe this is it. So again, what I do is different. Like, obviously I own the business, right? And I have some guys from, but we don't have a lodge deal like you would have if you were at Lake of the Woods or in Venice, where yeah, yeah. it's like, you go back, eat there. Is part of it just the guide himself has to go back to the lodge and be like, Look at my rack, boys. Look Dead at my on. Board. Dead on. Again, man, I've seen that a lot in the South. Uh, like, even if you say, hey, uh, bub, like, catch and release today, man. Like, we ate some redfish on the half shell last night. I'm good. Give me a burger tonight. Like, we're just going to catch. There's like a, there's like a, uh, out there at the guide shack and the cleaning table, there is a competition. And everybody needs to bring their limit home. Not saying all the time, not stereotyping. I'm not saying that's everybody, but I've I've stayed at several operations where you, or if you say like, I'm not bringing any back today, man. Like I I did that. Like in the back of the boat, he'll be fishing and he'll keep all of his. Right, 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 right. Ben, yeah, I've seen that too. You know? I've seen that too. Like if Betty Sue is just going to read her book and take a nap. Big Daddy Captain's gonna t- he's gonna bring it home. Yeah, so that I, I'm gonna take Betty. Full. I'm gonna make sure Betty Sue got her limit today too. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'll just make sure we keep them bigger ones there. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's backward thinking from, you know, a fishing standpoint as far as like, and again, not being a tree hugger, but from a, if you don't need to keep them, like you like you said, there are guides where it's catch and release, and I get guys all the time that like we don't really want to keep fish. Is that a problem? Like, no, no. And they're like, well, and, and, but then they tell me, well, when I fished here and I fished here, like it was a problem or the guide said, well, just don't tell anybody because now technically, you know, party fishing rules and all that stuff, but we're going to keep all those fish, even right. if you aren't taking them home or God knows yeah. if they're selling them or for the board or whatever. But yep. do you think that, I mean, and, and maybe some of that is, is old guides, but I think that obviously this is partial to me because, uh, you know, it's what I do or a part of what I do, but in your recent life here, now that you're not doing as much travel stuff, is that fair? Yeah, like that's fair. Yeah, I don't travel nearly as heavy as I did a few years ago. Fishing with guides in particular, do you think, I look at it like plumbers and electricians. I don't care if you're in New Jersey where you're at right now or you're here in Ohio. Getting a plumber or electrician that like knows that doesn't just do the Home Depot, like snap this together, like that actually can do things and think around problems or fix things. Those people are... There's not 20, 30 year olds in general coming to do that, even though those guys are making big money. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So the people that are, are not real plumbers are like, to me, it's like a guide, like a plumber can fix a problem and not just do really, really basic shit. And, you know, if the Home Depot doesn't have it, I'm, I'm SOL. And I see that same trend with guides. And I wonder if you had seen that, even though you're not doing it as much, where the younger guys are just not following up because it takes a long, a long time like a fishing guy good fishing guide in my opinion it's like an, a professional athlete with a bigger window where you have to go so long to 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 learn all the scenarios and the things that are going on right sure to, and then there becomes a point where you're just old and you're beat up and you're like hey i'm not as good as i used to be so right I, I don't think there's as many young guys i guess what i'm getting is i see the potential in some of these places where all of a sudden when the guy that's 65, 70, or 80, whatever he is, guy that he's like, hey, I'm dead or I'm not doing this anymore. Right. But they're, they're, we're missing your classes of guides. Have you seen that? Well, I mean, I, can I say that I've seen that? No, but I, I, I agree with you. And I think like this is what happens, right? I think this is a very fair statement. So it's been written many times that whatever bands and music you are listening to when you turn 30, That is what you are going to be stuck right there. And you are going to listen to that kind of music for the the rest of your life, right? You don't really find new music anymore. So I think here's what happens. Um, I I feel like the same thing happens with age brackets a lot. Like I, if I'm traveling to fish, I'm going on a recommendation from somebody I know. You and I are both blessed to just know a lot of people around the country. Like there's usually somebody I trust I can call and say, I got to go do this thing. I've who, called you several right, times. Who, who do I, who do I want to link up with? Right. So, I mean, I think we, we sort of have that advantage, but it, it's almost like, I feel like uh, when you have a really good guide, such as yourself with a long standing clientele, those guys are going to keep coming to you and coming to you and coming to you and recommending other people come to you until you're dead or you retire and that's you're just not an option anymore. So in the meantime, I feel like uh, behind that, these young guys you're talking about, 
Maybe they're, you know, they haven't been around as long, but who are they catering to? I would bet it's more people in their age class because somebody's got a friend of a friend. So does that make sense? It's like, then they're just, then all the people that fish with them, if they stick around and have the chutzpah to stick around for the long term, it's almost like you get in this rotation where, I mean, and it's no disrespect. I'm sure there's, uh, I know there are tremendous young guides coming up, tremendous right now. But I would need somebody to that I trusted to be like, yo, this kid, this 25 year old kid tearing shit up like you're going down here. You need somebody get on the boat with that dude. But left to my own devices. I, I don't know, man. It's it, it sounds shitty. And I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to. I don't know, man. I vet people. And I think one of the, the biggest problems now is that people I, I've preached this so much. They don't do that how much have i done on like how to choose a charter captain but do people well, actually you, listen give, yeah why don't you give us a, a quick rundown on that give us the, the cliff notes i don't i don't think that it's very it's it's very complicated but um uh, you know I'll, I'll 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 use it in a sentence I'll use it as an example so my kid is five he's obsessed with barracudas obsessed right all the kid wants to catch is a barracuda and sharks too I and know sharks. sharks and sharks but he's too little to catch barracudas right now, right? He needs a couple more years. But when I do that, uh, assuming we'll be in Florida or something, the way I look at it is I'm going to find some guide and I'm going to make his day because I'm going to say, yo, dude, I'm going to pay you your day rate. We're going to go out with my kid. And all I need you to do is get me on barracudas today. And that's it. And like a guide who gets it, like if it was you, you'd be like, oh. <gasps> Bonus day, like how fun, because barracudas are not very difficult. You know what I'm saying? But let's assume I don't have a recommendation. Like my 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 in-laws live in northern Florida, so we're, we're down there anyway. I have zero contacts in the Jacksonville area. I've never fished saltwater there. I don't know anyone. So let's say I have to do it blind. I think that uh, especially like with the pop-up of these fishing bookers and all these things, like all these like how to find a guide sites, <laughs> um, I'm going to make a bold statement, but I don't care. I'm uh, I'm known for that. I've like rifled through them, like just like looked in my area. OK, and I'll notice like you'll have 25 guides at peak striper season and it's Wednesday and they have an opening on Saturday. Well, why is that? You know Sketch. what I mean? Yeah. Why is that? And the there's a handful of dudes who are very well known in the scene here none of them are on fishing booker, right? Which tells me there's so many more people out there trying to do this and you'll have peak season, but these guides aren't, uh, aren't, 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 aren't booked. And I think too many people just are like, we're going to thing X and this guy's website says he catches the thing that I want and there's his calendar or I'm on fishing booker or whatever and done dude. No, like if I'm going to take my kid out for barracudas, I want to talk to some bitch on the phone at length. And I'm going to be extremely clear about what my expectations are. Like, look, dude, this isn't about me. I don't care if your redfish bite is fire. And like, that's because I, I, dude, I did an expensive shark charter once when I was real young and I was super excited. And the tuna bite was insane. Another 20 miles east of where we were fishing for sharks. And all this captain did the entire time was bitch about how pissed off he was that he had a shark charter that day and we didn't want to go tuna fishing and it like completely ruined my shit. It stuck with me. I was like, you, I hired you to take me out for a Mako shark. Like, sorry, you're not tuna fishing. And he would have taken us for an extra like 1500 bucks. If we wanted to pony up an extra 1500 bucks. No, I didn't hire you for that. So I've seen that before too. It's like, this guy is so into this thing for himself. He can't get away from it. So I just think people like they don't on one hand, I understand for guides, Getting a lot of obnoxious questions can be a real pain. Like, what's the weather going to be that day? Yeah, I get that. But it's not so difficult to explain exactly what you're looking for, right? Get on the same page. And more importantly, just be honest. Don't be the guy who is like, oh, I've been fly fishing since I was 13. I'm a casting champion. And then, like, you don't even know how to pull the line off the reel. Like, what do you gain like you don't look cooler. I'm sure you've dealt with this a million times. You just oh. said as much like I'm the best fisherman in the world. Actually, we're going to have a lot more fun if you can just say. And, and that's the thing about me, dude. I've been fishing a long time. I will tell you straight up. I will get on your boat. I don't do what you do. I'll be like, Ross, I'm not touching shit. I don't know. This is your show. 
I, you tell me how to reel this rod. I do the on a same thing line. when like, I go red fishing. Yeah, like I, you, you got to tell me what to do. I would never get on somebody's boat and be like, "Piece of cake." If it's not right, I would rather, I would rather surprise a captain like the mangrove snook guy. I would rather surprise you and let him go. Oh shit! Okay, I can tell you on the opposite side of the table. I want to talk to somebody on the phone physically, not email, not text before the yeah. trip is fully booked. Yeah. And it is getting, I'm telling you from a guide standpoint, it is getting really hard that people do not want to talk to me. And I, I, I don't book trips because of it as far as like John Smith. So you're like, saying John. you're like, you, you prefer to talk on the phone and you find that, that people don't like, they avoid that more and more. There are people that are like, Oh, I'm just busy. And I'm like, if we don't have five minutes to talk about a trip, that's going to happen in six months. Yeah. We are going to have problems during the trip or you're a guy that's going to bail before it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I could tell you that I'm seeing right now, too, that is I, I think it's happening everywhere a little bit. But a guide came up to me and this will be by the time this actually runs, it'll be a month probably or more yeah. but, uh, from when this conversation took place. But this guy who is a he's a he's a really good catcher. How about that? He's mm -hmm. a good fisherman. Mm -hmm. Okay. No issues. I don't know if, you know, we're going to drink beer together all the time or whatever, but yeah. And he came up to me and he's like, Hey man. Um, and he opened up and he's like, we're really struggling with bookings right now. And I'm like, really? Cause he's a good, he can catch them. Like, you know, and he doesn't have a bad rep or anything like that. And he's, and he starts telling me, he goes, so-and-so, so-and-so. And he names off all these people who I don't know, but I know the name. And he's like, they're booking people for 75 bucks or whatever a person doing. I mean, it's like, that's a headboat price, but to go with like a one-on-one -on -one deal, I'm like, yep. So again, whether it's fishing booker, or I don't even know what the end of those sites are, those things. I see the people a price pointing. Now, maybe that's our area right now because the fishing is good. But, you know, it's like I tell people, I'm like, there's a, a charter captain here who's pretty good. And he uses a pair of channel locks to shift his motor in neutral and to forward. I, I think that, you know, when there's other things than just the fishing, right? So when people are, if you're booking a trip. Of course or, there are. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, the safety aspect. Do you have all these things or do you know, like there, there's a lot of things or when that bite isn't because the bite even on Erie, like right now, I mean, we, we I live on the best walleye fishery there is. But me and you have fished together on days. We film these days where people didn't do well. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden that's what you're paying for. Or maybe when, you know, something happens or this guy's boat sinks because it happens. We just had a guy on our podcast, the, the watercraft guy. He said 70 some major accidents only in the Western Basin Lake Erie, right, producer dude? Like, wow. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot more than just like, well, it, it's not a loaf of bread, people. It's yeah. Not and 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 to, to that point, man, like the, the other thing you... I do understand that if you if you don't fish that often and like this is your big trip and you're going to book a guide once a year, right? Like you and I, because we've been just doing this shit so long, we can get on the phone with somebody we've never met before and in five minutes of that conversation have a pretty good gauge of how it's going to go down on the water, right? But I also understand that not everybody has that ability. You know what I mean? Like you don't ask the right questions. Um, and I, I mean, God, there, I, the amount of new guides that pop up here all the time. And I ask myself, like, how the hell are you all sustaining? Like, are there that many more people that want to go? And maybe there are. Um, and, and sadly, I just think that there are enough people who just, just book it. Oh, I like stripers. It's the right time of year. This guy's open booked. Done. I went on a bad striper trip about a year ago. <laughs> Yeah, did you? No, you went on a money striper trip about a year ago. Oh my God, Joe. We 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 covered um the turtle man. I don't even know if I put this down on paper and I said I gotta cover this. I don't know if I could have done it. We mm -hmm. talked about Turtle Man. We talked about Chico and I remembered his name. Yeah. Like it's that wacky stuff. We talked about how to buy, you know, book a captain, how not to. We talked about salty captains. Is there anything that you just said in there and thought, like, besides probably not bringing up, you know, that your mom likes me more, you know, than you? <laughs> Is there anything that you just, you know, I just. Next time you like come that. out, you could take her over to Hula Hands and just talk about all kinds of weird shit for a few oh hours. Oh, my God. I'd yeah. buy her some chicken nuggets in I a know. second. <laughs> meatloaf. Probably meatloaf or Yankee pot roast. Well, yeah, actually, I have a fun fact about my mom. Like, she is the strangest eater. And, like, she has this habit of uh, falling in love with the weirdest things at the weirdest places. She'll be like, have you had the Asian pot stickers at the Outback Steakhouse? I'm like, no, and nobody else has either. Have you had the Mexican pizza at Denny's? No, nobody orders that there. Like, so yeah, anyway, so, so I throw that out there. Just so you know, 
our moms are similar in age. Yeah. Everybody, when you get to a certain point, this is no different than us. We're going to look back on some of these. Maybe we look back at some of those hookshot videos that we did that's still around when we're 80 and you go, oh my God, can you believe we were doing that? My sister always says, she's like, I do not want my son who's only three to see half of your stuff until he is way old enough to know mm -hmm. better because I don't want him yeah. you forming these impressions. And I'm like, it's turned out all right. I yeah. think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to have meatloaf with your mom. I, I actually, she's <laughs> talked about making me a meatloaf, to be honest with you. She might. Yeah, she'll make you meatloaf. Just the, the uh, onion soup mix thing, you know. I, I won't, I won't want to say last question, but last thing, because we're, this is not a Q&A, because me and you can rap. We, we didn't have to carry it. You didn't have to carry it. I don't have to carry it. I could just sit here. It's nice. Do you see? Yeah, and then when I have you on my show, you'll be like, yes. Yes. <laughs> 100%. Yes to be a dick. Yeah. It's 800 for the first 15 minutes. First how long 15 are we minutes. doing? I got a schedule. <laughs> Just so you know, I need to know how long we're going to do this because I yeah. got people on the line, baby. Uh -huh. I know. What's Man. your last question? Get on with it. <sighs> now I almost forgot. But so people, this is the, this is what I get asked. And and I and my it's even like my mom, but this is the real question. And I get this is I'm gonna save the bulk of this for our next time together, whenever that may be. Mm -hmm. But do you see because people ask all the time and, and I take it as a badge of honor and again the busting of the balls and all this but being serious for five seconds at the end people want to see me and you on video again we need to do something even if it isn't a format and yeah. put something up do you say no or were we like no 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 dude look man and like I feel like I beat a dead horse with this subject believe me the number one thing I hear from people that listen to cut and retie is like when is hook shots coming back or when are you doing you know another video series um you know i did two at meat eater and 11 years of hook shots and i loved it it was super fun and i miss it i like without getting in the weeds on like the nitty gritty of making this stuff it's a lot of time and money and work it's a lot of time and, money, and now i'm independent right so okay uh, I, like I don't work for a meat eater or a field and stream anymore and i have my reasons and i'm enjoying being independent but uh, that was daddy at the bank, right? Like somebody else paid for all that to be made, right? People have to remember that more. So my thing now is even if I can find funding to do something like that, where does it live? Right? Like those things lived on the meat eater YouTube channel, which was huge. They lived on the field and stream YouTube channel, which was very big. Joey C does not have a YouTube channel and is not particularly interested in starting one. So I, I will, I will tell this, I'll tell you this, like my dream scenario getting back into video would be something where you do six, eight, really good, really fun episodes a year, like hook shots. I only made eight of those a year, six to eight of those a year. It wasn't like feeding the YouTube machine every single week with a new video. I couldn't do that because I like them to be crafted and well thought out and written down and have a storyline and be really fun. So I would love to do like a, a hook shots esque type thing and, and get the old bands back together, have, you know, all, all, all us old heads now, like, you know, I think it would be very funny to do it again, but <clears throat> that needs a home. And I don't know where that is. Is it Netflix? Maybe that's like climbing Mount Everest, getting in there. Like, like people are just like, oh, you did it. You should get on Netflix. Yeah, that's like, can I see all the gold bars at Fort Knox? Like, no, like that's not an easy thing to do. Um, and I'm not going to start a YouTube channel because it will fail miserably if I put out six to eight videos a year. Like YouTube wants the GoPro right here every day, catching whatever, feed it, feed it, feed it, feed it, feed it. I just had this conversation with a dude named Leo Sheng, who's extreme Philly fishing. He's a OG. Like he started when the Guggen squad did listen to that episode of cut and retie. He gets all into the back end of like what it takes to be successful on YouTube. And I'll tell you straight up, it sucks and I don't want to do it. So yeah, I, I would love to make videos again. It needs to be funded and it needs a good home and I have no money and no home right now. So that's really the hang up. If any, if any of you, you got a lot of high rolling listeners. If anybody wants to invest in the uh, Ross and Joe show, I, I got to live somewhere. We, we just learned that Joe's looking for a home. I um, need a home. Yeah. He needs a home. And I, and I, I relate because people all the time say with me and producer, they're like, man, we want more of those on the water days. And it's like, you, I mean, even hook shots like that was successful, right? But we've talked about this privately and I, I don't throw this out there on you, but you you have to get a lot more views to make money to actually make money 
these passion projects. Yeah, I mean, with, with there and Meat Eater, I was getting a salary. I was getting a paycheck regardless. So it's like the numbers were not like. Yeah, you know, right. And how was, much? How much time did you spend on one hook shots episode? For, too much. You were, too yeah, much. viewers don't understand. They go, "Oh, it was a sixteen-minute <laughs> episode. Must have well, taken them an hour." Exactly. Well, no, it took a week uh, to go film it with travel and somebody had to pay for that. And then probably, I don't know, 15 hours all together, weaving, cutting that and cutting teasers between all my other work. But it's 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 not even the time element. Like I've uh, I've interviewed so many YouTubers um, and my buddy Jared Serenier has got a great channel because I'm very curious about how it works. And he said a very interesting thing to me. He has um, he has a channel called. Um, Oh, it's outside the levees. So he's down in Louisiana. He, he he really does a really nice channel. It's not Guggen Squad style craziness. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, like uh, you can't spend even two days to get one video. Like that's bad business. Like if you're trying to feed the YouTube machine and you think you're going to go gar fishing for three days and then you're going to go red fish. He's like, no, that bowfin pond where you filmed little clips with other people. He's like, you need to go there three times a month and film in the same spot and just catch the fish. That's cost effective YouTubery. Like, yeah, it's like everybody's like, oh, these kids at the same golf course pond. Yeah, because that's what you have to do to create enough content to feed it. So, Hook Shots, while it had a great following, and still, I, I still hear about it all the time and I'm, I'm so proud of it. If you look at it as a win on YouTube, it wasn't. It didn't get millions of views. It didn't go viral. It had a loyal cult following. But like that style of video failed then metrics wise on YouTube and certainly will fail now. You make six to eight videos a year and I make the cut and retie video channel, dude. It's a flop. It's not going to get juiced. It's not going to get in the algorithm. It's it's it will fail. So it needs a home. Yeah, and it and it's a shame we we me and producer do talk about these different things because there are certain people that have, like that do similar stuff to what I do, right? And they talk about making me and you've even talked about this. I can't remember what's the what's the platform you, uh, starts with a P, not only fans but the other one. Oh, Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. So I know another guy who does well with this stuff, and he said, "Hey, I'm gonna charge five dollars a month to have." like access i don't know if it was patreon technically but that scenario and he's yeah. like all these people just think oh my god this is amazing and dude the outcry in the comments on the video when he said i'm going to charge five bucks a month and it's like that's a cup of coffee for most people right nowadays and and and, and even at that rate he'd have to have a hell of a following to make any money and make that your deal and sure. people were balking and, and i think that you know we've come accustomed to getting free content so much rather it's good or bad you know that we i you, you you're not wrong we are accustomed to free content although i i will say i'm actually uh i, I don't know it ain't really a spoiler alert because nothing's happening now but suffice to say i've been doing some research into patreon i've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me if i ever considered doing that um, and now, I mean, I don't know this guy. I don't know his story. I don't know why people are complaining about that, but I've actually noticed the opposite, at least with my, my people who listen to me, they're very into like, what else can we do to support you? Like, how can we help you? Like they understand that I'm independent and funding all this and like grinding it out alone without the security of a salary and field and stream bankrolling my video shoots. So, so I, I think that can go really either way. I'm going to see you in a Speedo taking showers for a $20. Uh, no, because you're a sick uh, and that's not what Patreon <laughs> is at all, okay? That's my OnlyFans page. Like, stop confusing them. One I write and one I strip, all right? And we'll see which one I charge more or less for. So, Well, I, we could do this forever, but I'm just glad we got Skinny Joe on. I couldn't do it forever. Let's wrap it up. Um, <laughs> I'm so done with you. And wait, I feel like <laughs> now I feel obligated that, you know, because I'm having a meatloaf with your mom next week that I, I have to find you a home. Yeah. But, find me well, a home. Find us a home. Dude, I believe me, man. Anybody who, like, I cannot stress enough how badly I would love to do something like Hook Shots again. It is just like you and I are not. 27 making this shit anymore like times are different things are different uh the world is different the the way people consume media is different than it was even those few short years ago so i i want to do it but some chips have to fall in in, in place and so uh, basically you're, you're throwing it and i like this i like this angle because i'm this would benefit me we're, we're throwing this back on some of those ballers that follow us and say hey 
You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Joe I'm not Smith's being. I'm not being needs to step I'm, up. I'm not being as brazen as you are, but if like there's some hookshots fan out there who's like, you know, Zuckerberg, and it's just like, I just want, I, I want to see this come back. So call me, call me, DM me. Like, I, yeah, let's do it. You know? No, so. I get it. And, and and you know, we've been. I I feel like we've both been really fortunate though that. Uh, this what we do is not a viral thing, right? Because of what we try to be genuine with doing our stuff, it's not I hate going to viral. Be. And nor have I ever tr- like I've. Everybody wants to go viral. Like I, I'm happy that guys like you. I don't give a shit. I'm never chasing viral. I'm never chasing viral. And uh, I, I and if somebody's listening to this, uh, I guess I'll course correct it by saying that we're pretty happy with go- what's going on. I like what we're doing. I wish we could do different things, just like you said. Wish we could have a little more time to do these things. And you're learning now as you're independent that it's even tighter to do those things, and and making the time for them, whether Can it's be. money or time. I right? also got a family now, man. Like for 11 years of hook shots, there were no little, little ones running around. You know, it's different. Mm. I can't wait to. I'm, I'm going to send a, a T-shirt for your son. Yeah. Um, and it's probably gonna have my face on it. He just so he, he asks about you all the time. <laughs> is there a punch? Is there is there a follow up? Do I say anything? Yeah, that's a complete lie. That's yeah. not true. I, at all. I, he hasn't see, brought you it. up since you left. No, I knew, <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. No, he he probably does though because he's he was into the fish. Remember, he was watching some of our stuff, which is probably a mistake. Too. I just took him to the Jersey Fly show yesterday, and like you know, they have the casting ponds there. Like, if you're a grown-up to me, sorry, anybody who fly fishes, like, that's the douchiest thing to be in the middle of a show floor, like, hero cast in a fly rod. I've never casted anything at a, in a, in a, at a show, right? Because I think it's it's bravado. It's like, oh, I need to test this rod. You're not buying that rod. You just want to stand there and cast and hope people, like, notice how how great you are. That kid would not take no for an answer. I'm like, dude, the casting pond is not cool. Daddy says so. Don't be the cat. No. Like, he... Went out there, had a whole crowd around him out there whipping his like so yeah, he's into it. He like yes, he is torn up with fishing. I just found my new co-host. Yeah, some <laughs> someday. I hope so. I hope so. It's like oh, I'm bringing the old man in this week. I got I got him out of the geriatric home for a guest appearance, you know. Man. But I'm also want to be like, just be a plumber. Okay. You'll have a much bigger boat than daddy ever did. Oh you know? my God, dude. Plumbers make crazy money. I know it. When we were in school, they said, don't be a plumber or a ditch digger. <laughs> they were blind. Ditch diggers make more than plumbers. Yeah. They were lying. I know. At any rate, I can't take much more of you either. This love fest has got to end. Fair. Um, Agreed. If you guys haven't seen some of the old stuff, go back and maybe even Google us. See yeah. some of that old stuff. You'll see some shenanigans and know that we really haven't changed, even though somebody's hair's colors and different things is, you know, shaded no. differently. But uh, Joe does a podcast in case you're living under a rock called um, Cut, Cut and, and Retie. Ross Cut will be on it again very shortly. I don't know the timing of your release of this show, but uh, we're, we're, we're doing some stuff here. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I will, we'll get my people, your people and see, because now that I know Have Joe your people, Exotics, call my people. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Exotics. Uh, we'll, stay in, we'll stay in touch on that. If nothing else, I'll give you Tammy's number just so you can with her. Just like constantly, like, can you ask Joe? Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to leave you with one thing. I just thought of something else. It's just hilarious. I was almost out too. I had opened my mouth. Go ahead. Producer, he, he, dude, never, he can never, he can never get out. So just producer, dude, do you, bear with do you, this happened when me and him came together, you know, TV show ends, other things going on. Producer comes and says, Hey, let's do a podcast. This is just before COVID stuff. Mm-hmm. Me and him literally are filming all the time during just basically the COVID beginning thing. Country Steve, we're doing all this stuff. This is when our kind of new phase of the big water fishing stuff was changing. At that point, at one of the last boat shows be- before COVID, we are out and a bunch of the reps and sponsors or stuff are at dinner after this show, right? We got to go back the next day. And there's this chick that's got like this fish tattoo. Well, she had many tattoos, Okay super funny but and so of course i go to the bathroom and come back and i know immediately i'm screwed producer dude do you remember this i remember you telling me this story yes yeah. <laughs> you'll appreciate this so i come back and i know that these guys just worked me over so they they're they're trying to tell um that i'm like bill dance or something to this chick to to then of course throw me under the bus you know mm-hmm. immediately later mm-hmm. so it's a very long story the very short is is we convince this girl to get a tattoo of my logo on her, like, I can't remember where it was. It was like upper, it was like, it was. <laughs> she didn't do it, did she? She was going to, and then just the COVID thing happened and all those things were shut down. And producer dude was like, he was like, I don't know if you, do you remember your stance on this? Are you going to waffle on me? 
No, I remember trying to protect you, I think, a little bit on this. He, did. We, he, he, he might was, not want to do that. He was all in on it, and he was like, because he loves seeing, he, that's his old TMZ type days. He, he did not work for TMZ, but you know what I'm saying. Like, that's good TV. And then all of a sudden, he comes to me one day, and he's like, I feel like I hate you, but I need to protect you. We mm -hmm. can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of that, just the wacky stuff of these things. That, yeah, they were, we were going to exchange a fishing trip and a, a video and I was going to pay for the tattoo and we were going to, you know, video this process of somebody getting a giant big water tattoo like on there. I was, and we were, all the rep guys were negotiating how big it was and where it was going to be located. I don't know what made me think of that, but. You're the eternal, you're the eternal frat boy, dude. <laughs> but I, That's I, what you are. Was, That's a great did, compliment to her. The, yeah. The, the irony is, is I did go to college, right? And I was definitely not a frat boy. I might have smacked a few around here and there, but. um until the next episode, Joe, I, I appreciate your time. We had no notes. We had nothing, and it just seemed to work out. Oh, dandy. Well, we'll let the fans decide. It's always good to see you, whether digitally or in person, <laughs> mostly digitally. Yeah. Until the next episode. So thanks for tuning into the Big Water Podcast. Producer Dude, we are everywhere. We should have this written down, but we are on Pandora, we learned, not uh, one of the other ones. Oh, my. Yes, we uh, added Pandora. Yes. Yeah, Pandora. There was something that you know, we should have known a long time ago that closed down or whatever, but uh, Apple google amazons i don't know just big water fishing youtube instagram like click subscribe something it kind of helps out the algorithms right joe algies as you call mm, them the algies yeah i don't know how to end this but let's just hit the end button pause joe till the next bye. episode bye hated it <laughs>